you've been tailgating since 5:30 this morning, you'd be bow-legged and cross-eyed <laughs> for noon, wouldn't you? Whew. J.D. Carlson will kick it off for Michigan. Mike Saunders, 32. Dana Hughes, number three. Deep to receive it for the Black Shirts of Iowa. The kick hangs high at the five. It is Hughes. 25. He finds a crack and gets to the 30 and almost popped out of the crowd. Well, that's a pretty good return by Dana Hughes. And the Iowa Hawkeyes will come out. You never know about Hayden Fry, whether he will go on the first snap of the ball to one of the gimmick plays, go for some trickery, or whether he'll sit for a while and wait and see how things go. Matt Rogers will come on 6'4", a sophomore from Walpole, Massachusetts. How in the world did he get out here? Well, it's because his daddy was an MVP basketball player here at the University of Iowa before he became the head coach of the Boston Celtics. On first down, Rogers turns and hands to Richard Bass, a senior from Omaha, and certainly no gimmickry in that particular play as he just runs to the right side and picks up about three. Bass and Bell start in the backfield. Bell's quite a story. Got a lot of yards last week. He weighs 255 pounds. Hughes and Peter Marciano, the wideouts. Up front, Palmer, Baxley, Anderson, Devlin, Davis, and Hawthorne. Not exactly household names outside of the state of Iowa, but a blending group that's getting better every week along the offensive front. Call it second down and six. Run it again, go to big mayor Nick Bell this time, and Bell is chopped down a couple of yards short of the line of scrimmage. 6'3", 255, Junior, Las Vegas, Nevada. The down people up front for Michigan's defense are White, Teeter, and Hutchinson. The backers are Marshall, Milligan, Anderson, and Grant. J.J. Uh, Abrams, J.J. Uh, Grant not here this week. Hurt last week in the Michigan State game. Secondary is intact. Key, Welburn, Murray, and Todd Plate. The ball rests at the 38-yard line. It is third down and two for the University of Iowa Hawkeyes. Matt Rogers straight back and no pressure. Throws underneath, pass caught by Bell. Bell is a running back at 255 pounds, we told you, but he is also a very good pass receiver. He's an outstanding receiver. In fact, last year against the University of Iowa, he caught 13 passes, and that's an Iowa school record. Against, against Indiana, I mean, uh, for Iowa. You know, it's unusual, Keith, that a man that big as you mentioned, 6'3", six, uh, six, 255, can catch the ball as well as he does. Well, Bill Inyard, the uh, earthquake laid out at Oregon State, weighed about 250, 260, and set the record for 61 carries in the game. He's a pretty good receiver, too, and there's a big hole found on a cross buck back over the left side with a little delay pattern for the Hawkeyes, and it's good to the Michigan side of the field at the 49, and again, it's Bell. Now, Bell... Uh, it's also blessed with uncommon quickness for a man his size coming out of the tailback position. And Hayden Fry says he's uh, relatively young yet. Though he is listed as a junior, he is still learning the game. Well, if he gets a whole lot better, uh, <laughs> it'll be terrifying. Here's Rogers back, throws underneath again. The pass is caught again by Bell. Ludes one, two tacklers. Takes the football down inside the 35. Gives Iowa a first down at the Michigan 33 before Lance Dutton can make the tackle. The reason Bell is such a threat on the right side, number 43, he's just going to slide out of the backfield and catch the ball on a little hook. Now is when he's so dangerous. 255 pounds. He's past the big men, the defensive line, and he's shifty enough to make linebackers and defensive backs miss, or he's strong enough if he has to, to run right over him. Last week against Wisconsin, ran for 217 yards. That goes Matt Rogers to throw on first down. Again, he sets up a screen to the right side, goes to Bass this time, and Bass reaches the 25-yard line before he is brought down by Bobby Abrams, number 24. Matt Rogers talking to him yesterday about uh, a lot of things, including any influence that his dad might have had on him coming to Iowa and what advice he might get from a coaching dad. He's not that, uh, you know, smart as far as football goes, but, you know, he's, uh, he's a coach and he gives me general advice on, uh, you know, the winning attitude and pressures and dealing with different things. And, uh, you know, that's, that's great advice, Walter. 
Good looking young kid, isn't he? Yes, sir. Second down and two to go to the big man Bell. First down Iowa inside the Michigan 20 at the 19. Eric Anderson finally wrestled him down. And there's a lot of head shaking going on on the Michigan side right now. Because Iowa has come out thrown short passes, yes, but mainly they've just been ramming it right at him. Schembechler is not used to being uh, run against. His defense leads the Big Ten in rushing defense, and Iowa has run the ball, and as you mentioned, thrown the short pass very well in this first drive. Alex Marshall, linebacker number 59, shaken up for the University of Michigan. They need him today, and so we've got a timeout right now in behalf of Alex Marshall. We're looking there at Alex Marshall, number 59, had to be taken out of the ball game from the Michigan defensive side of the ball. They're still working on him, trying to figure out. It, it looks like it could be uh, a stink, you know, where you have a little pinch nerve or something. Hopefully it'll be on to that and he can come back. There's the Michigan defense, but I'll tell you, this possession uh, has been marching right along. Uh, you can see there are seven plays. They picked up 51 yards using three and a half minutes, and they're in scoring position now. First down at the Michigan 19. Brian Townsend into the ball game, replacing Alex Marshall at the outside backing position. Rogers hands the ball off, and this time the Michigan defense rises up. Trip Welburn, the strong safety, stepped up into the breach, and uh, they roll Bell backwards that time. A loss on the play back to the 23. That's a four yard loss. We saw Welburn last week getting his helmet into the pile a lot. And it looks like we might see more of that today. He plays the strong safety. This is the area where Michigan likes to blitz. In fact, that time, strong safety Welburn was on a blitz. Pass Rogers, whips one. Pass is caught at the 15-yard line and goes out of bounds at that point, killing the clock at 10 and a half minutes to go. It's Peter Marciano. He's only 5'9", 170. Yes, he is the nephew of Rocky Marciano, the late champion out of Brockton, Mass. Kind of interesting, too, that McMurtry, uh, Greg McMurtry playing for the Michigan Wolverines is also from Brockton, Mass. Well, they went to school together. In yep. fact, Marciano was a year ahead of him, and Marciano says of McMurtry that back then we had a pretty good team and McMurtry was a fullback. He said he was a blocking fullback at that. He must have had a pretty good ball club. <laughs> <laughs> it is third down now and a five. And Matt Rogers back to throw, getting a little heat from the backside. Then knock it loose, ball rolling around. And uh, did they call it a fumble? Yes, they do. Brian Townsend picks up the ball. Rogers is out arguing that it's an incomplete forward pass. I was trying to throw the ball, but the referee was standing there looking right at him, and Jerry Hendrickson just shook his head and said, fumble. Mike Evans knocked it loose. Well, you can't advance a fumble in college football. Take another look as we look at from the end zone. Just play action to Bell. Nobody was open on the play. Downfield, as I was looking downfield, the coverage, he pulled the ball back. He was not going to throw it. And as the ball was uh, knocked loose, and it's a big turnover for Michigan. So the Wolverines now get a make a break for themselves, give it to Tony Bowles, and the Iowa defense red hot over it. Merton Hanks comes storming up from a cornerback and brings down Tony Bowles. At quarterback, it is Michael Taylor getting the start today. Michael Taylor, the six foot, fifth year senior from Lincoln Heights, Ohio. The running backs are Leroy Horde at fullback and Tony Bowles at tailback. The wideouts are Callaway and McMurtry. The offensive front, Doring, Dingman, Everett, Elliott, and Screpinac. And we go inside 10 minutes to go. Second play coming up for Michigan. Loss of three yards on the four yards on the play. Second down and 14. Howard is in at wide out, in motion. Ball is handed off to the tailback, Bowles, and Tony runs it up the middle this time and takes it back to about the 35. As Bob mentioned uh, earlier, that the, the man who started the quarterback position at the beginning of the season, Michael Taylor, banged up in the opening game, but coming in here to what is generally regarded as one of the snake pits, old conference foe, University of Iowa, they put Michael Taylor in to weather the storm. Ford is out, Leggett is in, the block for Michigan. Taylor's first pass of the day, good to McMurtry. 
It's up at the 46 and a first down for the Wolverines. The defensive alignment for the University of Iowa will go like this. Blue Rulin, Keppel, Johnson, Dumont. Blue, Down, guys. Blue is a true freshman. Yeah, he is. Quast is a four-year starter. And the secondary is Wright, Polly, Wise, and Hanks. First down for the Wolverines. No score on homecoming day at the University of Iowa. Bowles found a hole on the left side and got about eight yards, maybe nine. Well, let's check in with Jack Aroop. Well, Keith, good news on the condition of Alex Marshall. It's a pinched nerve. They've added some ice to the left side of his neck, and they say that he will be available to play more if needed. Well, that's good news. Dr. Jackson, you called that one correctly. <laughs> they hurt them like the Dickens for a while. The deep burn. Second down and two for Michigan. Now they're on the Iowa side of the field for the first time today. Give it off to Leggett, the big freshman from Colorado Springs, and he's got a first down. Alan Jefferson did not make the trip today for the University of Michigan, and Jared Bunch is still home uh, get, trying to get over an injury from earlier in the season. Leggett, a true freshman, uh, was forced into uh, backup uh, duty. When Horde was injured, I mean, when the bunch was injured in the uh, earlier in the uh, year, and uh, Bo is thin on running backs at this point. Michael Taylor on first down from the 42. Keeps it. Second pass. It's good. It's Callaway, and Chris has got a first down for Michigan at the 30-yard line. Brad Quas came in to get a pretty good lick on Taylor. Doesn't seem to be anything wrong with Michael Taylor. Uh, there was some uh, talk early in the year that he had a sore shoulder. He did have a sore shoulder coming out of spring training and training camp coming into the season. Uh, then he got the rib injury in the Notre Dame game, and he has had uh, four games off. He's been ready to play the last two, he says. But uh, I haven't seen anything wrong with his throwing arm in the last two balls, both completions. And he threw that one under a peck of pressure. Tony Bowles. A couple of yards. Miami is not playing today. Nebraska and Oklahoma State. And Colorado. Colorado now having to play without the enemy. In the fourth quarter now, it is Alabama 17 up on Tennessee. With uh, Texas leading Arkansas in what could be a major upset. Important game of the Big Ten, Illinois, Michigan State. It's second down and seven. Ball on the Iowa 27 for Michigan. The fullback, Leggett, maybe a yard, not much more. Keppel. The middle guard and blue, the defensive end, combining for the tackle. They're playing on grass in Iowa City these days. Aiden Fry took the rug out and planted grass. And it's, it's very well conditioned. It's uh, what the prescription turf. Prescription athletic turf. It was developed over at yeah. Purdue. And I think it fits his team more. It's not as quick a surface. Hayden's ball club, not real quick. And he, he really has not had fast ball clubs in the past. It's third and six for the Wolverines. And Michael Taylor back, gets some heat. Breaks out of there, is going to pick up his first down. Up the middle, he goes to the 10-yard line. You kind of hold your breath, you know, when you, uh, you see your quarterback put his head down and die for it that way, but he simply ignored the converging defensive backs and went for it. Well, this is the thing that Taylor in the lineup gives the University of Michigan. As Keppel gets good pressure on him, he just flushes out of the pocket and gains the first down uh, inside the 10-yard line. Watch Quas, number 35. He's covering the tight end, Walker. He's got him covered very well, but then Walker turns into a blocker uh, when Taylor takes off running. Taylor keeps it. And goes down, a loss on the play from the 10 back to about the 12. As the Hawkeyes fought their way through the traffic, 57 was the first man in. That's big Matt Rulin, a junior from Hilbert, Wisconsin. 
And Quast was in to get a piece of the action as well. You mentioned Quast being a four-time starter. He was all Big Ten inside linebacker last year, and the Big Ten is blessed with several very good uh, linebackers this year and last. Call it the 11-yard line, actually, because the ball is marked inside the 12, and it's the 11th play in this possession for Michigan. It's first of the game. Fumble, the ball is loose and recovered by Iowa. Brian Weiss covered it. I think it was Mel Foster, the other inside linebacker. So they have exchanged turnovers in the first quarter. Number 66, let's watch him as he plays off the block of Dinkman. Gets his head and shoulders right in there, knocks the ball loose. Big turnover, and Wise is there for the recovery. So both teams squander scoring opportunities. The Wolverines are scoreless. The Hawkeyes own the football first down at their own 13-yard line. And Matt Rogers, son of Jimmy, coach of the Boston Celtics, is in at quarterback for his second possession. He was impressive in the first one. He went to the short pass, didn't force anything, but he was victimized by Mike Evans on a blindside uh, rush, knocking the ball loose for the Iowa turnover. Big Bell has the ball. And I call him that because he weighs 255 pounds. Once we get that well established, then we won't have to fuss with it the rest <laughs> of the day. But it is unique to see a tailback that size because he weighs 35 pounds more than his fullback. And he's seven, he's seven inches taller. Uh, you see the two of them standing next to each other. You think their roles are reversed, that he should be the fullback, but that's not the case. Rodgers a deep drop, lets it go down the middle, it is picked off, and picked off by Veda Murray. Who else? He's the man in the secondary for the Michigan Wolverines, the free safety or center fielder. There he tried to force one, the pass intended for Mike Saunders, and it may cost him. It's a double zone, too deep. He's going to try to hit the receiver coming from the right side, and Murray comes from the left. To play a too deep zone, you have to have outstanding quickness and speed with your two safeties, and Murray and Welburn certainly have it. And so here's Michigan now with the ball marked just inside the Iowa 40. They've been down there to the 10, knocking on the door, fumbled it away. Michael Taylor turns and hands the ball to Tony Bowles, and he's looking for a crack. And will pick up about three before Melvin Foster brings him down. Now let's join Roger Twible in New York. Keith, Michigan State leading 10-7. Spartans at their own 35-yard line with 135 to play, try to run out the clock, and Highland Hickson fumbles, recovered by Quentin Parker, and then Jeff George hits Mike Bellamy with a nine-yard touchdown pass. Illinois, 14-10, and Southern Cal leads Notre Dame. Back to you, Keith. 36-yard line, second down, and about six. A little flip. Michael Taylor getting some heat from uh, Jeff Keppel. Kind of flipped the ball, trying to trying to get it ahead to Leggett, and he couldn't do it. But big old Jeff was all over him, 270-pound senior. It's a fifth-year senior, and he really fights his way through. In fact, he's like wrestling in there. He, he was a two-time state wrestling champion in high school. He and his other two uh, comrades on the defensive line, Rulon and Johnson, call themselves the Three Musketeers. They say they look out after each other, hang around together. And he has played uh, an outstanding game so far. Third down and six. Taylor's pass thrown down the middle. Pass is good for a first down. The catch is made inside the 27 by Chris Calloway, the junior from Chicago. And Alabama has defeated Tennessee 47 to 30. 
That was a battle of unbeatens in the Southeastern Conference, and now Alabama will take a step toward the Sugar Bowl, a very positive step. A game that will be seen here on ABC Sports, New Year's Night from New Orleans. Big win for Bill Curry. Oh, boy. That'll shut up some folks, won't it? Yep. Call at the 27-yard line and a first down for Michigan on the Iowa side of the field. Hawks showing a four-down front now and a whistle before the snap. Referee is Jerry Hendrickson. It's a lot of discussion. Well, obviously it wasn't a delay of game. Maybe it was a delay of game and the clock wasn't working. Or it could have been some movement in the offensive and defensive line. Going to pick it up. The clocks were not working. We did not realize that. The corner clocks were not working. Okay. The way they're looking at the end of the stadium makes me think that it's something to do with, with the 25-second clock. Seems to be working now. Yep. It may not have been working uh, properly when uh, Michigan came up to the line of scrimmage. They picked up the flag. Anyway, despite the little hooting, it'll be first down at the 27 for Michigan. Taylor, a little rollout. Little pump set up a screen. Leggett, two blockers in front of him. Big fullback pounds his way to the 15 yard line, and that's a first down for the Wolverines. Eddie Polly brought him down. Here's Jackaroot. Keith Michael Taylor, the Michigan quarterback, is using some extra protection, the normal shoulder pads, but in lieu of a flak jacket to protect his injured back, he's got this Velcro attached rib protector that goes all the way around his back and hopefully will keep him in the game today. You look good, Jack. Take race a, car, you know, you take a guy out of a race car and put him in a football suit, and uh, I don't know that he looks comfortable. Yeah, I've ridden to the airport with him a couple of times. I think we all needed some <laughs> of those things. <laughs> Horde is back in the game now, number 33. He's at the tailback position. Leroy has the ball. The Iowa Hawkeyes have him right at the line of scrimmage. Matt Rulon led the defensive charge. That down bunch, those three guys up front are tough, aren't they? Yes, they are. They're a good crew. Roland is 275, Keppel is 270, Jim Johnson is 270. There's two juniors, Keppel is the senior. Tony Bowles out of the game right now, dinged up a little bit. Now Horde, the lone remaining back, as Michigan spreads the field. Two wides to the top, one to the right. Blindside pressure. Taylor takes off, finds the hole, touchdown. And a penalty flag. Got a flag. Against Michigan. I think. Yep. No touchdown. Take a look at the center, number 51, Everett. See what he does before snap. See, he moves a little bit. He almost stood up. It was almost like he was standing up before he snapped the ball. And that was the illegal procedure. That's Steve Everett. Second year, uh, for, well, it's actually as a redshirt freshman, second year at Michigan, uh, first time starter. He's been doing an outstanding job uh, all this year. You have to really be watching to see that. Though, well, that's what the umpire's right there looking at him. Yeah, he is. That's Howard in motion. Ball comes back to the 20. Second down for the Wolverines. Taylor getting some heat now. 
gets his pass away, and it is incomplete, and it was effectively thrown away. Reserving the possible opportunity for J.D. Carlson as they come up to third down. If they can't effectively produce points out of that, then I'm sure we'll see the place kick. And we're down into the final seconds of the first quarter, only 44 seconds remaining in the first period. Both teams with long drives. Iowa already with two turnovers. The second turnover may cost them some points. Michael Taylor now. Hayden Fry's 11th season at the University of Iowa. He certainly turned things around. He won more games in 11 seasons and the Hawkeyes had won in the previous 21. It'll be third down for the University of Michigan. 15 from the Iowa 20. 44 seconds to go. First quarter of play. Crowd very close to the field here. Make a lot of noise. Michael Taylor back. Good protection. Down the middle. Touchdown, McMurtry. Great throw and a tough, tough catch by McMurtry. Bo had him. Bo had him to the sideline to tell him what he wanted. McMurtry is here. It's just going to be a simple post pattern. The man in the middle is going to move a little bit to his right as the other receivers come down to the wide side of the field. Taylor does a nice job, and when he gets back, looking to his left, pulls the man in the center of the field over and barely gets the ball into McMurtry before the safety gets there. I'm not even sure Greg had time to close his fingers before the safety arrived. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good throw, and if anybody had any questions about Michael Taylor's arms, I think they've, I mean, his, uh, his arm, they've been answered now. J.D. Carlson for the extra point. The snap was bad. He was off to the right side. Ken Solom had to reach for it, and by the time he got it down, it was too late. He missed it. Uh, causing J.D. Carlson to pull it and miss it. Solemn is the holder, and he had to catch the ball. I don't think he got it down on the spot. Sometimes when it's a bad snap, it kind of throws the timing off of the kicker. And J.D. will kick it off now. And he gets some air under it, knocks it down to the four where Mike Saunders has it. Ooh, he takes a lick. Short of the 20. Goes down hard at the 18-yard line. Chicago Bears, who've wobbled a bit lately. Cleveland Browns have wobbled some, too. They'll get together 9 o'clock Eastern time next Monday night here on ABC Sports. They'll try to get their wheels turning back on track. I always enjoy watching a game in that Cleveland Stadium. I, I mean, I'm glad I'm sitting at home watching it because playing it was pretty cool at times, especially here for a night game. That uh, wind coming off the lake. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> November, December. Mm -hmm. Ball is just outside the 18-yard line for the Hawkeyes. Matt Rogers turns, gives to Nick Bell. Bell will come to the 20, and that'll do it. Mike Teeter, the middle guard, brought him down. Michigan defense likes to slant a lot. They uh, very seldom will give you the same look twice, and that's why they're so tough to run against. Iowa mixing the short pass with its run um, and considering the, the pass versus the run now that was good for a couple of yards. They run eight times they picked up two yards net. They've thrown the ball five top of the picture. A little different set here. Matt Rogers quickly to the outside. The pass is complete to Peter Marciano. And they'll give him uh, not quite a first down. They've marked him just short of the 30. That yeah, yard marker. Yeah, well, now they move. It. Yeah. Georgia Tech's won two in a row. Look at that. You know, we were we were talking about uh, Hayden Fry being the innovator, uh, surprises and whatever. 
really hasn't seen much of it. Uh, he may have thrown in a few pass, a few plays that we haven't seen before. Michigan may not have seen them, but nothing real tricky as yet. Rogers going to put it up, but a hurry. A pass is thrown away. Pass is caught. He was in the grasp of a defender, Brian Townsend, but still uh, upright. And uh, Townsend delivers the ball for a complete. Uh, rather, uh, Rogers delivers the ball to Bass for a completion. Nothing uh, particular about it, except it averted a big loss. There was no gain on well, that. Well, if it were in the uh, if it were in the NFL, it would have been a grasp and control sack for Townsend, who's in there in place of uh, Alex Marshall, who is out with a. Uh, a little zinger, a little uh, pinched nerve in his neck. Should be back later on. Ball is at the 29, and it is second down. Second quarter of play, Michigan leading 6 to nothing. Rodgers had a lot of time. Couldn't find anybody, and then he ran out of time. And this time, Brian Townsend got his arms wrapped around him and took him down for a fall. Look at the first quarter stats. The turnovers are what uh, keyed the first quarter. Three in the first quarter. The second Iowa turnover, the interception by Rodgers, was the motivation for Michigan to take the ball in good to field position and go in for the score. You were talking about wrestling a while ago, Bob. In the state of Iowa, they understand the word and the sport. Oh, yeah. You know, there are a lot of defensive linemen, both on, bo on both of these teams, that are that were very good wrestlers in high school. Dan Gable had his wrestling team working out this morning before the game. Homecoming weekend. I imagine he had a lot of folks watching. Rogers passes away and is thrown into the crowd. Incomplete. Intended for Mike Saunders. And uh, Rogers uh, had some big people in wearing white shirts looking him right in the eye. Yeah, and there was nobody open downfield. So he did the right thing and just throwing it out of bounds. <laughs> Michigan is done by getting ahead early in this ball game. In effect, is taking some of this crowd out of the game. We talked about this being a snake pit, a tough place to win, and the crowd can be very involved if they're ahead. Jim Heisek is in to punt. Low line drive. Going to be returned by Trip Welburn, and he comes back to the Iowa side of the field and down at the Hawkeye 42, 36-yard punt. And a 10-yard return with 12.45 to go in the first half of play. Wolver it helps, I know. Pass. McMurtry going to let it go. The wide out to the corner of the end zone, and it is intercepted by Iowa. It was too slow developing. Burton Hanks comes down with it. Too slow developing because Callaway initially had... Uh, uh, full stride on defenders, but by the time McMurtry got the ball in his hands to let it go, it was over. Well, McMurtry was an outstanding uh, baseball player in high school. You see Hanks coming off the field with his second interception of the year. Should not have thrown that ball. McMurtry, uh, baseball player, an outstanding center fielder. Could have signed a baseball contract. Six figures coming out of high school. And it's interesting that the first gimmick we're talking about, the yeah, big surprises, comes from, comes from both sides of the field. Yeah. The reverse pass. Well, if it had been a little quicker with it, it would work. It took too long. And so the Hawkeyes come back at their 21st down. Matt Rogers, no pressure. Waits a long time and finally throws it down the middle, and they're going to call it good. And that's, that's a pretty good pickup. That's 18 yards out to the 38-yard line. And it's caught by Marciano, who went right down on his tummy and scooped it up. Well, he can catch those low ones. Marciano is just 5'9". I was in the Iowa training room yesterday and had a chance to chat with him a little bit. And wanted to be sure that uh, he was excited about being on TV today. He says his friends back in the Boston area don't really believe that he's getting to play out here. Nice catch. There's a little pitch back to big Nick Bell. And he's up to the 41 where Eric Anderson takes his feet from under him. Hayden Fry in conversation yesterday. I asked him what he had done in rebuilding the Hawkeye football program. This is what he said. I think it's really a combination of uh, selling everyone that we could win, that we had the, uh, the necessary things in order to win here. Great academic institution. Uh, little country town with a beautiful campus uh, 
an opportunity to play professional type of football, wide open type of offense. And uh, we've uh, kind of sold the sizzle rather than the steak. And it's worked. Eric Anderson brings down Matt Rogers. I don't know. Uh, I think he bobbled a ball, a broken play, and uh, went ahead. It had the look of a quarterback draw. But I think it was just a look and not a plan. Well, you're right. I think the play was shot, and he did the smartest thing, just went north with it and gained some yards, and it's third and short. There's your tight end. Iowa, one of the few teams in the country that stands their tight end up on the line of scrimmage. They've had a great one here for a long time, and Mark Cook. It's a Hayden Fry innovation. Rogers back on third down and three, goes underneath with it, and maybe depends on the mark. That's a tight end making the catch. Michael Titley, a junior out of Brooklyn, New York. They may measure here. They're standing up, a tight end, uh, number 84, Titley, as you mentioned. It's good for passing, not so good for running. Of course, I've talked to Hayden about this, and he feels like they can block from that position standing up just as well as they can get a release. But, uh, you know, yeah, drive blocking, they even do it on the goal line. It's something that uh, Hayden has done with his tight ends for a long time. It is the first down. And Rodgers now is 8 out of 10, 72 yards, and one interception. This is Bell just booming through there for a pickup of about eight yards. Roger Twyvel will be with us at halftime and we'll have a special report from Al Michaels candlestick park regarding the status of things in San Francisco and obviously from Al's point of view that includes the World Series which for the moment is scheduled to resume on Tuesday and Wednesday and possibly Thursday at candlestick park and will be seen here on ABC Sports second down and two here goes Bell. Fumbles the ball. Michigan's got it. Vader Murray covered it. That's Townsend involved in the play, I think. 45. Lost the ball when he came down. Watch the block here by Bass on 37 Anderson. Right there. Good read by Bell. Now you just have to hold on to the ball. He's big, as we mentioned, 6-3, and you've got to put the ball. He got, gets hit from behind. Three, three fumbles in four possessions for the University of Iowa. Yeah, that's Bobby Abrams that knocked it, knocked it loose, and that is the fifth turnover in the game. More time with a mistake. Tony Bowles is back in for Michigan at tailback after being dinged early in the ball game. From the 23, Tony has the ball, looking for some daylight and finds a little as he gets up to the 30-yard line. Nine and a half minutes to go in the first half. Jason Dumont made the tackle for Iowa. Michigan uh, is going to win this game. They want to be out in front, like I said, to take the crowd out. If Iowa wants to win it, they cannot turn the ball over continually. Last week against Wisconsin, they had the five turnovers and barely got out of there with a win. Over 500 yards. 131-24, and it was right to the end. Now this is Leroy Horde for a first down for the Wolverines up to the 36-yard line. Melvin Foster, number 66, had six tackles. Take a look on the left side. He was blitzing, plays off the block of Everett, and slides along the line and makes the tackle. It's his seventh tackle of the ball game. He led Iowa coming into the ball game in tackles. Melvin is a junior from Houston, Texas. And the Wolverines now with first down at their own 36. Michael Taylor starting at quarterback, handing the ball away to Tony Bowles. There was contact early on, but Bowles just stayed right in behind his blocker and kept wiggling around and finally wound up picking up about four yards. The plays are brought in by wideouts. Oshim Beckless using messengers. 
Number 40 is Derek Alexander. He's another freshman out of Detroit. And he's starting to show up more and more in game action. McMurtry and Callaway are back in there right now. Second down and six as Taylor gives it to Bowles. Bowles rides for a couple. So they'll be looking at third down and short. Scores involving top 10 teams. USC has gone to back to the lead over Notre Dame, 14 to 7. Kansas playing Colorado pretty well. Alabama beat Tennessee and Texas upset Arkansas, which is a stunner in the Southwest Conference. The Big Ten today, you've got fourth quarter there. Wisconsin looking to win their first of the year, and that is much to the chagrin of our now 50 year old director, Larry King. <laughs> Had a birthday, he did. Yes, he did. A couple birthdays this week. Third down and a long two as Taylor comes down the line, breaks the tackle and gets the first down. So there's the running ability of Michael Taylor for the second time today, paying a dividend for the Michigan Wolverines. Well, this is something that you don't have when Schimbeckler has Elvis Gerbach in the ball game, and that is the option threat, the running threat of the quarterback. The thing that the option gives uh, an offense, it kind of forces the defense to slow down a little bit, play it more vanilla, play it more pure. No blitzing, not a lot of line twist, and mostly zone coverage in the secondary. And you can do a lot when you know what the defense is going to do. First down, midfield Wolverines. Stay in with the ground game. Bowles now searching his way well down the line. Picks up five to the 45. And tonight, we invite you to spend Saturday night with ABC. New episodes of Mr. Belvedere and Living Dolls. Burt Reynolds, the private eye of B.L. Stryker on the ABC Saturday Mystery. So that's three good reasons to stay with ABC all coming up tonight. Second and five, it's Horde cutting back into the middle and a first down for Leroy as he crosses the 40, but nope, they're going to mark him back short of the 40. Mark him down at the 41. Brad Quast. Third and one coming up. You got to look for the option here. Uh, like it in short yardage. Out of the wishbone, first man Leggett. Pull back, first down, Michigan. At the Iowa 37 yard line. And we're now at five minutes and 23 seconds to go in the first half. The ball's been going up and down the field fine. Yes, it, was, it has. Just the turnovers. Haven't uh, been getting in the end zone. Five turnovers here in a quarter and a half of this ball game. And uh, unfortunately for Hayden Fry, three of them have been on his side. Bowles got two, but uh, he came into the ball game in pretty good shape uh, as far as the turnover edge. Iowa coming in was second, uh, was second last in the Big Ten. First down from the 37. Little delay there as Taylor couldn't find anybody. Jukes one, gets away from another. Look out. Iowa man really crashed into that wall hard. Well, that wall is very close. I think it's Foster, too. Yeah. Yeah, Melvin's coming out all right. Watch the fake here by uh, Taylor as he just still has the ball. That's pretty good. But it, but it didn't fool the safeties down there. Polly and Wise both in good shape. Now look at the ability here, getting away from Dumont and then out running. I guess that's Keppel. He makes a, something positive out of nothing. And as you see, uh, Foster running him out of bounds. That wall is very close to the sidelines. All of that action produced one yard. Give it back to big Leroy Horde for a pickup of about eight yards. I say big. He weighs 220. A junior out of New Orleans. Oh, 
Foster's going to come out of the ball game now after that collision with the bench and the wall and that long run. He gets a little bit of a breather. Red uh, Rod Davis replaces him. Rod is a sophomore from Queens, New York. 260 linebacker. Ooh. Foster has been busy. Melvin has 11 tackles before coming out of the game. Four minutes to go in the first half. Michigan leading 6 0, threatening again on third down. Oh boy, they send Bowles at the middle, and Bowles runs into John Derby and stops. Derby is right here. He just came in for uh, Foster. Watch as he's going to meet the ball carrier right over the top. Good charge by the defensive line. Keppel getting in there and some penetration allows Derby a free shot at the ball carrier. Defensive line doesn't allow any uh, movement up front, and that allows Derby to get there and make the tackle. What a try for three, 46-yarder. Longest in his career, 48. Eight out of eight in field goals for J.D. Carlson. Nine of nine. He missed the extra point, but he drilled that one, and it's 9 nothing, Michigan lead. Fumbled at the Michigan 15. First possession. Second, they were intercepted. Third, they punted. Fourth possession, fumble at the Michigan 22. Now they get the ball back, trailing 9 nothing. 3-12 to play, first half. J.D. Carlson kicks it off. It's Hughes, Nathan Hughes. Pretty good return, penalty flags, go down. Hit out of bounds, going to pack 15 onto it. Hughes with a nice return, outruns some of the uh, Wolverines. I believe it's going to be 65 Simpson who's going to get there a little bit late and do a little extra damage out of bounds. That well, we couldn't see, but uh, yeah, 65 Simpson. Timeout. Iowa ball their own 44. So that pinch nerve problem is all right with Alex. He's back. And it's first down for the Hawkeyes. Ball resting at their own 44. Little touchdown about here would mean a lot to them. Richard Bass carries. And the fullback gets a little bit out of it. Tony Stewart, who was heralded as the starting tailback, in fact, was the starting tailback at the beginning of the season, has not played today. Yet. It'll be second down and six now. The ball at the 48. Stewart, you were talking about, had over a thousand yards rushing last year, but had major knee surgery at the end of the year, and is really not all the way back from that injury. Yet. Rogers gets away from the pressure, dumps the pass off to Bass, and he gets a first down for Iowa. Matt Rogers got away from Mike Evans, and you got a penalty flag on the play. So hang on a second. It's either first down plus or not a first down. Holding. It's against Michigan. So it's first down plus. Veda Murray, the center fielder for the Michigan Wolverines, had this comment yesterday talking to him about the position he plays so very well. It's a relaxed position. You just sit back and you read the quarterback's eyes. It's it's not that hard a position compared to what some of the other guys are doing on the team where they're up front fighting a lot. I just sit back and just let things develop and I just react to it. He has an interception and a fumble recovery so far today. <laughs> He's reacted pretty well, hasn't he? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, it's, he and uh, Trip Welburn, uh, two outstanding safeties, uh, they really key that secondary, although all four of those players are excellent. 
Lloyd Carr, the defensive coordinator, does an outstanding job of, of calling the defenses, and the defensive backs disguise their coverages very well, and the front does a nice job of slanting. Iowa refuses the holding penalty against Michigan, takes the play, gives them a first down at the Wolverine 44-yard line, and Matt Rogers back goes for Bell. Bell dropped it. Welburn covering on the play. And I thought for a second Bell had enough of the ball to hold on, but in making his turn, it came out. The pass was late. Bell was looking for it a little bit sooner. Rodgers was looking downfield, trying to get the ball to his uh, wide receiver, who was well covered. Timeouts remaining now. Iowa has all three. We are at two minutes and three seconds to play. Michigan with two. Hawkeyes ball. Wolverines 44. And Michigan leading nine to nothing. And Hayden Fry is wearing his white britches again today. Been wearing white britches for 20 years. Pass is thrown underneath. Not good for much. Gain is down to the 40. Pick up the four yards as the tight end Pitley makes the catch. And the strong safety, as he is assigned to do, Trip Wilburn makes the tackle. Strong safety means that safety goes where the tight end is. Usually covers the tight end in, in man coverage, and that's what that was. Welburn, his first year at Michigan, was a wide receiver and was kind of alternating. And uh, the defensive coach just says, hey, you can come over here and play right away. And he uh, told us last night that he really enjoys strong safety. He also said he's still a little receiver. I mean, he likes to catch the ball returning kicks. That's a first down as Travis Watkins finally gets back into playing condition off a sprained foot. Uh, he figured to be, and uh, when he's playing, is the leading receiver for these Iowa Hawkeyes, and he's come back now and just made his first catch in a while. Well, he was the second leading receiver on the ball club. Aiden Fry had two other wide receivers coming back from last year, but they were both out of the ball, and one had knee surgery. One was academically ineligible. The other was injured, uh, Falloon, but that's one of the problems for Iowa, lack of speed at the wide receiver position. 117 to go, and the Hawkeyes on first down. Bell carries it just across the 25 down to about the Michigan 24. Once he found it, he yeah, carried it pretty well. It, yeah. <laughs> it was hot. Iowa spends a timeout. They have one remaining. 105 to go in the first half. The Hawkeyes, Iowa. Stadium sold out. Tailgaters going and going all morning long. They're just an absolutely glorious day in the heart of the country. Temperature in, at least in the middle 60s, if not uh, the high 60s. All right, the Hawkeyes on second down. The ball just inside the 25 of Michigan. Michigan leading 9-0. Rodgers on loads it in a hurry. The pass is good to Bainan Hughes. And Hughes is ruled out of bounds. Right about the 10 yard line and it, it'll be a first down. It is nose of the ball looks like it is touching the 10. So they've got a chance now with 59 seconds. Been a first half of mistakes. It's been a year of mistakes for the Hawkeyes. They have 15 fumbles and seven interceptions on the season. Well, that's why they're near the bottom in uh, the turnovers. Uh, the uh, turnover margin in the league. They've given the ball away many more times and they've gotten it back. This goes to Bell, the big man, and he's to the five. Incidentally, I was wrong on the timeouts remaining. They have two remaining, and they're going to spend one right here. Save the clock at 33 seconds. The bell was piled up, and a couple of offensive linemen were piled up. And Hayden is roaring. You know what he's hollering about. He wants somebody to call timeout because they wasted 10 seconds. Well, the, the problem is the coaches do everything for these guys. You know, they tell them well, when to come right. to meetings, they call the plays for them, and they've got to be able to think for themselves. And, well said. and he will be able to do that, but he's just a sophomore. When he's a senior or junior and he can take control, he'll say, all right, I'm going to do this whether the coach wants me to or not and knows it's right. Yeah, but there are other guys out there. It doesn't have to be the quarterback. True. I think I'm 
going to send Bo a bill. I feel like uh, we're becoming the voice of the Michigan Wolverines. <laughs> Why are we not participating in some of this? Well, I don't think Bo would uh, answer your bill. <laughs> I, don't think he I don't think he'd even acknowledge it. <laughs> second down from the five, and it's second down and five. They can, by a matter of a couple of inches, get a first down. Bell goes in motion. That reads uh, something different. It's uh, Rodgers, the quarterback, spinning around, getting to the four. And uh, there's Hayden trying to get another timeout, stopping the clock at 25 seconds. Did you really think that was the play? Uh, yeah, it was because Rodgers, is, as soon as he uh, faked the ball to Bell, put it away and started running. I just. They must have seen something on the videotape during the week that uh, made them think that play would work, but it certainly didn't. There was no back remaining in the backfield for him to toss to if it was an no, option. That's right. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a pretty good sized briar patch he's trying to run through. Well, I mean, those folks are not easy in the white shirts. Mm. 25 seconds. The uh, Hawkeyes just spent their last time out. In the fourth quarter, it's Indiana 21-18 over Minnesota. Roger Twybo will bring you up to date on all the scores here at halftime. And uh, there have been some surprises today. I was frankly surprised Alabama whacked Tennessee, even though it was at Tuscaloosa. I thought it'd be a little closer ball game. Tennessee had played well all year. You know, when you look at this ball game and, and what Hayden Fry is talking to Matt Rogers on the sideline about, uh, I'm sure he's going to want to throw it in the end zone. Michigan has only given up one rushing touchdown all year. Well, if he uh, if he throws it on third down and makes it fine, but if he doesn't make it and it's incomplete, then they have killed the clock with a chance to get three. Yeah, well, you've, you've got to get some points. Lloyd Carr on the left. Defensive coordinator. Third and four. Watch the tight ends crossing here. Touchdown. Travis Watkins. Blocked, stuffed, low kick. Wolverines it was a Wolverine way up in the air, and it was knocked down before it would really even got started. Is it Murray again? Well, that's a big point block. Later, Murray. Murray blocked one last week. A big field goal attempt against Michigan State as an interception, fumble recovery. Take a look in the middle of the screen, number 27. That's Murray and Welburn, both safeties. That That's thing never got started. Big point block right there. Let's go back to the touchdown. It's just a one man pattern. Travis Watkins out here is just going to go into the end zone and break to the outside as the tight end is going to come this way, but it's almost a one man pattern. Defensive man jams him and just loses sight of him. It's Lance Dotson. Yeah. Dutton. So the sophomore got caught. Looking the other way. Dotton jams him. And this is a one man pattern all the way. He says, if he's not open, throw it out of bounds and we'll kick the field goal. So Rogers looking pretty good despite the interception. 13 out of 16, 115 yards, and now a touchdown. And it's a 9 to 6 ball game, and both teams have missed their extra points. Skillet will kick it off. Jeff Skillet. Bowles and Howard are the deep people for Michigan. There's Jeff Skillet. Jeff is a sophomore from Silvis, Illinois. Down the middle, bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. It bounces off Howard, picked up by Tony Bowles, and Tony's still going. Out of bounds, across the 30 at the 32, and you got 14 seconds remaining. Michigan has two timeouts. Big play, timeout. One more play, timeout. Who knows? 
And I gotta believe that Bowles gonna play it kind of conservative here. If it was the other way around with Hayden, Hayden's the more the yeah, more he'd the be aggressive the one guy. To let her fly, yeah. <laughs> But one never knows. At 60, you get a little frolicsome sometimes when you're matching wits with the guy across the field. Yep. Well, he already tried that reverse pass by McMurtry. Yep. Now, nope, going to run out the clock. <laughs> Iowa can't stop it. So they will let it expire, and at halftime, it is Michigan 9, Iowa 6. Another dogfight in the Big Ten. Skillet kicks it off for Iowa. Michigan now will have first possession of the second half. A return here by Desmond Howard, the freshman who can fly. Whoa, one man. I think if Skillet doesn't get him by the shoe tops, it's a see you later, but he got him. And so Michigan will start with the football up near midfield. Well, one of the big differences coming into this game between the two teams are on special teams. Michigan coming in as number two team in the Big Ten on kickoff returns and in coverage. Iowa is last in the Big Ten, so it shows here 42 yards on this return. And they go to work at their own 45-yard line, first down, with Michael Taylor, the quarterback. Ford and Bowles lined up behind him, and it's Tony Bowles. And Tony pops it pretty well. Runs it inside the Iowa 40 to the 39 before Merton Hanks can bring him down with some help from Eddie Polly. That's a big gain. That's the first down. Basically, the Michigan offensive front, as you see Bowles excited, I'm sure Schembechler told him in the second half, we got to come out and just run right at him, and that's what it did. Straight blocking by that big offensive front for Michigan. I'll tell you, Bob, having that Dean Dingman back in there healthy makes a big difference in that offensive front, too, doesn't it? For sure. Holds again, big hole left side. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it was an absolute flat pancake that time for Derek Walker against Larry Blue. He put Blue just flat of his back. Walker, a fifth-year senior, and Blue, as we mentioned earlier, our true freshman. Three men on that Michigan offensive front as you take a look at Blue. Three men weigh over 290 pounds, so it's a big, strong, and very physical offensive line. 33-yard line. Second down and four for Michigan. It's Bowles again. Loses the football, but comes back to get it at the 36-yard line. Anthony Wright, a blitzing quarterback, stripped it loose, but Bowles got it back. Got a friendly bounce. Wright was on a corner blitz that time and got in the backfield and made something happen. Look at the total yardage, exactly the same. The top of the screen, the total number of plays, almost the same, 33 and 31. First downs is the same, time of possession. It was almost even. But a touchdown right here for Michigan is very, very big. God getting into it. Michael Taylor back to pass on third down, throws underneath to Leroy Horde. Horde gets just enough help downfield, gets the first down at about the Iowa 26-yard line. Melvin Foster, one more tackle. They had a corner blitz on. Look at the corner down here at the bottom. He's going to blitz inside. Horde's going to pass him up and just slip out here, and the ball is going to be thrown to him. Taylor is going to turn his back. Looks away. That's right, number 10, who was just in there and caused the fumble. Taylor just gets rid of the ball to avoid a sack. Bowles out. Michigan goes to three wides. On first down. Callaway in motion, and the lone back Horde running straight ahead in a penalty flag. Came from a linesman. Holding, and Michigan.
Kerbach. Yeah, Elvis. Elvis Kerbach had been the starting quarterback. Taylor got hurt in the second half of the Notre Dame game. He came in, hit 10 passes in a row, and he was 4-0 as a starter. Red shirt freshman understands that his uh, his job was uh, the job of the quarterback was Taylor's. His job is to fill in when needed. He came in, won four games in a row, was leading the Big Ten with six touchdown passes. After he was tied with Matt Rogers on the other side, and uh, I think it was a, I think it was the right decision by Schembechler. Taylor has played well. So now after the holding call, number nine's got to bring him up. On first and 20. Taylor going big. Down the middle, McMurtry. Intercepted. Torque hook. Interception, number 42. Probably shouldn't have thrown Taylor. The safety hooks was in good good position. And so Iowa turns Michigan aside. Marshall's second time being hurt in the ball game. First time it was a pinched nerve. And it may be the same thing. So there's a timeout on the field. Number uh, three, a strong safety. The linebackers are here. You normally look for them to blitz. They don't blitz, but Welburn does. This causes confusion in the offensive scheme. You always check the linebackers. They're the tight end. Palmer sees him coming late. Welburn gets in, mixes up all the uh, blocking assignments and causes a bad play. Rogers back to throw. Gets some heat. Down the middle he goes. Got a man open. Tight end. Can't hold it. John Palmer. Oh, my goodness, Palmer was all the way out beyond the 45-yard line and could not hold on to the ball, and I mean it was right on his hands. Rodgers did all he could do. Palmer just drops the ball. Nine to six, the Michigan Wolverines leading in the ball game. A game that has been made close by turnovers. Both teams turning the ball over, turning it over, making mistakes. And it's a dogfight in Iowa City. As the Hawkeyes come up third down and 12 now, the ball is resting on their own 18-yard line. Alex Marshall out of the game for the second time with a nerve problem in his neck. Back goes young Matt Rogers to throw. Gets a feet get a little nervous under the pressure sometimes for young Rogers. He takes a pretty good lick and goes down hard from Mike Evans. The pass. Intended for the tight end, Titley is incomplete, and Iowa uh, is caught by Titley, rather, but far short of the first down. And uh, that means uh, they've got to kick the ball away. Hysack comes in for Iowa. His first punt today was 36 yards. Trip Welvin got a 10-yard return out of it because the ball was kicked low. And this is a low-line drive, but longer than the other. Welburn takes it back at the 30, gets one, two, three blocks, and then goes down up around the 36-yard line. 47-yard punt that time, and a six-yard return at 11.09 to go in the third quarter. Now well, Nebraska's put Oklahoma State away. Alabama beating Tennessee. Texas, there's a big upset there. Texas beating Arkansas. Orange is starting to beat some people, though. They're playing very well. In Oklahoma, yeah, Texas, Illinois won a big ball game for them today. All right, Michael Taylor turns and hands the ball to Tony Bowles, and the penalty flag goes down as Bowles gets up to the 40-yard line. This possession starting for Michigan at their own 37. 51 white. Holding against the Wolverines. Now they're starting to make mistakes. That's the second holding call we've had in the last three minutes. And that was on the center, number 51, Steve Everett. 
Michigan came out the second half and returned the opening kickoff past the 50-yard line, then threw the interception, and now have really lost the, the field advantage that they got coming out in the second half. Four flags on the Wolverines, 40 yards. The umpire today is Ed Hassel, head linesman Tom Ransom, line judge Ron Bennington, field judge Bob Colburn, side judge is Henry Armstead, and back judge is Tom Herbert. Jack Arud, what about Alex Marshall? Same well, thing? Keith, we checked with Gerald O'Connor, the team physician for Michigan, and he says it is. It's a pinch nerve, and this time they're going to keep him out, at least for several sets of plays, to see if they can see if he gets a little better feeling from it. Okay. Penalty backs him up. First down and 20 for Michigan now. Back on their own 27. Little delay. Tony Bowles up the middle. And Tony's out close to the 40. So that's a 13-yard pickup there. Brett Bielema, a redshirt freshman from Prophets Town, uh, Illinois, making the stop. The down three, the big three guys in the middle for Iowa's defense, Rulin, Keppel, and Johnson, have again played very well today. Second down and seven. Michael Taylor. That's Chris Calloway for a first down at the 49-yard line. He caught it right on the sideline. With Calloway, when you're playing him, you've got to give him, you got to respect him, you got to give him a little cushion. And that pass was just too quickly delivered by Taylor. Michigan has always had excellent uh, skill at their wide positions, uh, wide receiver positions. They just haven't thrown the ball much. With Gerbach playing this year, they've opened up more, and uh, both Callaway and McMurtry are outstanding receivers. On first down, it's Bowles, sidestepping one tackler, but the pursuit is very good, a pickup of one yard. And tomorrow, it's a day of international sports action on ABC. Live from Rome, we'll have international basketball. The Denver Nuggets in the McDonald's Open. That's at 2.30 Eastern time. Then we come back to the States for live coverage of the Budweiser International Horse Race from the Laurel Course in Maryland. Top thoroughbreds running at 5 Eastern time, 2 Pacific. International hoops and horses. Tomorrow on ABC Sports. Second down and nine. Taylor's pass to McMurtry good. Out of bounds, 30-yard line, first down, Michigan. Caught it in front of Torque Hook. That was an outstanding route by McMurtry, who came inside, tried to go to the middle, held Hook to the inside, and uh, Taylor, outstanding uh, throw. Put it right on the numbers. Threatening one more time, but still, they've been down here knocking several times, but it's only a 9-6 to six ball game as Tony Bowles runs the four. And they'll stop him at the 26 with Brad Quast and Jeff Keppel combining to bring him down. Michigan wants to come out in the second half and try to establish that they have control of the game. They did that in the first drive of the second half, except for that... Uh, mistake by uh, Michael Taylor thinking that he could get the ball in deep when actually uh, the man was double covered and he shouldn't have thrown it. But the interception, now they got the ball back with something, it's an opportunity to make something happen. Leroy Horde. Oh, he bounced right off. That is a good piece of running by Leroy Horde as he was stopped, bounced off, and got almost all the way to the 10-yard line. Rulin had a shot at him, but couldn't wrap his arms. And if you don't wrap Horde, he's gone. Michigan has two outstanding running backs, Horde number 33 and Bowles. Both linebackers slip through. He dodges away from him, not tackled, so he keeps going. But you talk to defensive coordinators who play Michigan and face Leroy Horde. And they like him better than probably any of the other running backs that Michigan had. They're really high on Horde. First down, just inside the 11. This is Bowles. 
And Bowles is going to have about five just short of the five. So Michigan definitely knocking on the door right now. Both Bowles and Horde split the tailback position last year, although Bowles gained uh, 100 yards or more in seven different games. Leroy Horde is also an outstanding tailback who has been switched to fullback because of the injury to Jared Bunch. Down here, they go to the wishbone, and it has more meaning with uh, Taylor in there because he is a fourth running back, if you will. He keeps that one and dives ahead to the two. So he wrote it, belted it off to his fullback, Leggett, kept it, and picked up almost four yards, three yards. To mark him just inside the three. Now you get goal line folks going in for Iowa. Number 54 checks in. That's Rod Davis, the second uh, nose guard, and Eddie Polly comes out a free safety. So Hayden Fry, believing that Bo Schimbechler will try to run the ball into the end zone on third down, sends in a goal line defense. And it was a good call by Fry. Tony Bowles ran right across on the angle to the left, and Bielema hit him head up and brought him down at the two. And now it is fourth down for Michigan. This is where you have to make a tough decision. If you kick a field goal, it puts you six points up. Going for it. I think he just wants to gut check his team right here. Well, if you're only six points up, obviously a touchdown extra point will put the other team ahead. Well, the crowd immediately gets into it on fourth down. They can get a first down. This is Taylor running for the corner. Touchdown. So once again, Bo Schimbeckler's decision to start Michael Taylor at quarterback, giving him that fourth threat in the backfield out of that wishbone, pays off. A quarterback who can run. That's exactly right. This is a play Gerbach couldn't move. Fake is going to be this way. The tight end is going to release. But this is the key man here as the Taylor comes out. He can outrun the linebacker. It's an option runner throw. Good fake. Walker's out there if he needs him, and he outruns Blue for the touchdown. Now the extra point. They've been hard to make today. Both teams having missed them. This time, Carlson gets it. 5.49 to go, third quarter, and Michigan takes. That is Alex Marshall, who is out of the ball game and uh, sitting on a 10-point lead. Is it Michael? Michael Taylor's in there, too, well, standing right. Marshall, 59, is the linebacker. They're going to probably keep him out. If they can sit on a 10-point lead and get by without playing him, they won't. Elvis Gerbach, number 15, who had been the starting quarterback, Michael Taylor, the senior, coming back today and doing a tremendous job. This points up with a quarterback that can run, get outside the pocket, oh can really help. 16 to 6 to score now as Carlson kicks it off for Michigan, and this is Danon Hughes waiting at the five for Iowa. And Hughes comes up to the 23, where it'll be first down, and let's check in now with Jack Aroot. Well, Keith, as you know, this is only the second team in the Big Ten to use natural turf, and like Purdue, they've installed the athletic turf, the special turf that was founded, prescription athletic turf, but this is the brain behind it. These are all the computers and the dials that run the pumps and the irrigation to keep the turf dry, even in the wet. It seems to have done quite well today. It looks like that confounded thing that runs a sprinkler in my house that I can't figure out. <laughs> Who do you say invented that stuff? Who? Purdue. Is it Purdue? Purdue? Yeah. <laughs> First down from the 23. Matt Rogers. Having a pretty good day. Young Matt delivers. Right on the numbers to number two, Travis Watkins. Now, Travis Watkins is at a sprained foot. He's a senior from Claremont, California. He's a worker. He's not the fastest guy out there. He just keeps on moving. He watches where his quarterback is. He comes back to his quarterback. He's the man that caught the Iowa touchdown pass. Hayden Fry he says he's feisty. He says he's like a little alley fighter. He just keeps coming at you and gets it done. Yes. 
measuring for the first down. That short. Aiden Fry has really not come out with any really uh, off the wall type of formations or plays. Of course, he's expected to do that so much that uh, I think by co coming out and just playing it straight, sometimes uh, he surprises the other team as much as uh, running some gimmick plays. Second down in the yard. And Nick Bell has the first down, getting up to the 36. And Hayden Fry, when questioned about the use of the grass, the turn to grass, said this. I'll put it this way. At this time last season, we had had Jack, eight major uh, surgeries. Off. We haven't had a single one this year. It's reduced our injuries down. We've gotten rid of all of the abrasions, everything associated with artificial turf. That's a uh, that's positive statement if you're, if you're one of those believers in grass. Certainly a damning statement for those who want the turf. Matt Rogers unloaded it, got rid of it. That's going to be down. Though. The pass was caught all right by Richard Bass. But when he caught it, his knee was on the ground, and it was Mike Evans who was climbing all over Matt Rogers. And when you got a guy who's six foot three, 250 pounds, and his eyes have already turned red, you do <laughs> want to get rid of the ball, don't well, you? The, the, Matt is expecting his offensive line to hold out a little bit too long. The receivers are covered downfield, and he just can't wait that that long. The time before he waited a long time, finally got rid of the ball, but he can't expect that much time when he's standing back in the pocket. Oh, here coming up the middle is Mike Teeter. Puts a hard hit on the Iowa quarterback, but again, the ball is away. Intended for Peter Marciano. Michigan's defense coming into the ball game had 19 sacks, and that's three more than they had all of last year. And of those 19 sacks, 14 of them were either by linebackers or defensive backs, and that tells you that, that Lloyd Carr, defensive coordinator, likes to send Linebackers and defensive backs, not in all-out blitzes, but in a situation where he feels like he has an advantage on that blitz. Brian Townsend, 45, is in there in relief with Alex Marshall. Here's a little delay, hand off to Nick Bell, the big tailback, the 255-pounder. And he gets taken down by Eric Anderson, who is a mere 235-pound linebacker. And when he took him down, he hurt him. Nick Bell is shaken up and remains down on the field. Nick Bell, the Hawkeye, shaken up on the play. This was a, one of the, probably one of the gimmick plays that uh, Hayden Fry, uh, inside handoff, Anderson number 37, hits him right at his thigh. I think they butted heads first. That may be where it is. He had that huge game against uh, Wisconsin last week, but he's been pretty well controlled today. I think it's just it's just above his knee. It didn't look like it was knee. Maybe his thigh area. It was just bruised thigh. That's Ed Crawley, the uh, trainer, the longtime trainer for the Iowa Hawkeyes, 16 years, taking him off. But the point is, he walked off. Yeah. That's good news. Right. Four minutes to go in the third quarter, and the Hawkeyes will have to punt it. Third punt of the day by Isaac. Doesn't get a lot of air under it, but a fair length on it. Trip Wilburn from the 18 up the middle. He comes. Running north and south, and he comes all the way back to the 40-yard line. A 47-yard punt and a 21-yard return. There's some more color in the Iowa countries. That's pretty. We have Dave Burns and our statistician just pointed out, Bob, that Michigan has not punted in the game. And Iowa has no penalties in the game. No penalties? No penalties at 342 to play in the third quarter. I think I'd rather not punt than have no penalties. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, I think. Right. 
You could be you could be turning it over too. First down. Ball at the 40 for Michigan. And this is Leroy Horde. Well, that's why the opposing coaches uh, sing his praises. You see that little quick juke, both feet moving, lateral movement so quick, quick. Here's Jack Aroot. Keith, the story is not good on Nick Bell. He is out for the rest of the day. The report is that he twisted his right knee, and they're going to hold him out of the game. Ready? Bell had been doing well, catching the ball and running it. On first down now, after that run by Leroy Horde at the 46-yard line of Iowa, here goes Tony Bowles, and he is taken down by Brad Quast. And he is taken down right at the line of scrimmage. Michigan puts a touchdown in the freezer here, and they may have the ball game. Yeah. You look at the defensive line. That's uh, Johnson, number 71, and Quas, number 35, gets in and makes the makes the play. The Wolverines in their possessions turnover score, turnover score, turnover score. So it's been a day of peaks and valleys. Taylor back, back, setting up a screen. Bowles has it. Man in front. He gets around the corner. Look out now. One man. Touchdown, Michigan. No flags. Anthony Wright, number 10, had a shot at him, but couldn't hold him. He got him on the goal line, but he tumbled in. And the Wolverines have scored again. This great uh, running ability by Bowles. That was a uh, effort play all the way. 45 yard touchdown on a screen play by Tony Bowles. And that really quiets the stadium. We talked about the noise and the fans here being a, a snake pit. It has not uh, been that here in the second half when Michigan has scored these two touchdowns. J.D. Carlson for the extra point. Good. Let's go back and take a look. Number 42 on the right side is Tony Bowles. He's going to be the man that catches the ball, a little screen pass. Taylor sells it well, looks to his left, sets up, then drops back. Makes a nice catch looking back into the sun. Now it's all Bowles as he breaks one tackles. Ludes another there by uh, Quas can't catch him and then cuts back and does a nice job of getting into the end zone. Point good. 23 to 6 Michigan leads. They've scored 14 points in 3 minutes and 24 seconds. Well, just a good call. They, they probably felt like uh, if they get the ball in the hands of their, their speed backs, uh, Bowles and Horde, that the screens might be there. And it's always a good play, it gets, especially against the team that's playing a zone coverage. Carlson kicks off. Taken at the two-yard line by Mike Saunders. Saunders takes a hard hit at the 25, but... Stays with it and gets it up to about the 28 where Otis Williams brought him down. Number 17. Otis is sort of the hot man on that special team, the kick coverage team for Michigan. You see that 17 showing up a lot. They've got good special teams. The only time uh, that the special teams has really let them down this year was in the first ball game against Notre Dame when the Rocket Ismail ran back two touchdowns, two kickoff returns for touchdowns. Both still kicking doors over there. Yeah. I don't blame him. Yeah. Could very well be undefeated. Could very well be ranked first in the nation. First down for the Hawkeyes from the 27. Matt Rogers back. Good protection. Gets his pass off. It is good up near the midfield. 49 yard line for the Hawkeyes. Gain on the play. Big one. Danon Hughes going up to get it. The wing back. Hughes is a redshirt freshman out of Bayonne, New Jersey. Number three. This is where Iowa now has to open things up, and you'll see uh, 
See what Hayden Fry has in his bag of tricks uh, and how, how well he throws when he's from behind, coming from behind. Pass, Whoa, it's a pass. Dangerous. Tied in, lets it go. That's Tetley throwing. Travis Watkins can't get it. Back there defending Veda Murray. Murray is 6'3, 195. Travis Watkins, 6'1, 175. I think that 20 pounds showed up right there. Well, that's just what we were been, have been looking for from, uh, from Fry. You get behind, but of course, Murray knows he's behind, knows he has a lot of tricks up his sleeve, and is ready for this play. Yeah, I, asked, I asked Vader Murray about that last night. Yeah. He said, I just go wait and see. Right. Well, he knew, <laughs> of course. He knew that uh, all the tricks that, uh, that Iowa comes up with. Second. Rogers pass. Good. Marciano. Got a foot in. First down at the 35 yard line. And that's a good catch for the little guy from Brockton Mech. So they move the chains, and here's Jack. You know it, Keith, you know it's homecoming. And I've had this mascot working. You've seen him in, in Iowa before. But look at this an alumni mascot. They bring Herky out of retirement. He's one of the alumni people that was a mascot here during his collegiate days. And the white beard, that's what signifies him. So now just hopefully I won't lay an egg here on the sidelines. So what? <laughs> Let's hope that. Now that doesn't produce much. Richard Bass carrying. Richard is 5'9 and 220. Blocky fellow. And he'll have a yard or two, maybe three by the time they finally put it down. I'm winding down the third quarter. Third quarter, Oregon State is leading UCLA. Hmm. Bruins may be one of the, may be the lap story of the season. Second down and seven. Rodgers has a man on the sidelines, and the pass is good. It is caught by Watkins again, and he's down at the Michigan 18. Brought down, or fell out of bounds, actually. But Brian Townsend, who is playing in relief of Alex Marshall, put a lick on Rodgers. So young Four. Matt has taken some hits today. Four receivers go straight down, and the uh, Watkins at the bottom is just going to go down and out. It's a good read. By Rogers looks deep first and then comes out to his, uh, his outlet receiver, which is the out. So the Hawkeyes trying to rebound here in the final seconds of the third quarter. They trail 23 to 6. And they'll spend the timeout. So going into the fourth quarter, they will have two timeouts remaining. The University of Michigan student-athletes exemplify the talent and preparation that identify Michigan alumni as leaders. Michigan's extensive research base and exceptional faculty prepare students from Michigan and from around the world to meet challenges they'll face in the 21st century. In the classroom or on the playing field, Michigan students are committed to achieving the high level of success that comes from all-out effort. That's a Michigan tradition. The two coaches. Hawkeyes stick it in here. They're still in the ball game. You know that, yes, sir. The next, well, everything is big when you when you're playing conference games. You, you just you can't go anywhere and feel terribly secure about it because they don't like you from 1939. But. Uh, that man there knows that better than anybody. Oh, yes. The record against Iowa. You know, to see him on the sidelines, so uh, he's ramming and raving, he's very competitive, but he also has a sensitive side, a very caring side. In fact, this last spring they had a, a, a gathering for him called 20 Years of Bowl. That's where 400 of his former players returned for a stag dinner that lasted into the early hours of the uh, 
that morning. There was toasting and roasting and lots of stories and memories, all in honor of that man right there. The longer you're out, the better friends you are with that man. He is, he is really a player's coach. All right, first down from the 18 for the Hawkeyes. And Rogers back. Ball is slapped down at the line of scrimmage. Number 94, T.J. Osmond got his hand up and slapped it aside, and that stops your clock at 42 seconds to go in the third quarter. The Honda Scholar Athlete of the Week brought to you by American Honda, proud to support amateur athletics. The award this week goes to Joel Statt, sophomore linebacker, University of Minnesota. 13 solo tackles in their win last week over Northwestern. Honda presenting a check for $2,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of the University of Minnesota. Joel's major business, great point. Oh, straight A. Rogers back on second down, gets a pass off, and can't hook up with Travis Watkins. So Rogers underthrew that ball, trying to get it to Watkins, because Travis could see where he had to go to get the first down, and Rogers didn't extend him that far. Let's pause five seconds right here for our local stations, or ABC stations, to identify themselves. Panel 12, WISN TV, Milwaukee. It is third down and 10 now. This is an area where the Michigan defense really gets tough. It's less uh, ground to cover. They're very aggressive. Sometimes they blitz. They're very good disguising defenses. Rodgers to the end zone. Good touchdown, Marciano. Well, they had just played a couple of different zones, so they're mixing it up. Linebackers are going to be blitzing in here. Marciano is here. They're going to be double covered in the end zone, but watch the play he makes in freeing himself up when the ball gets there. Take a look at the linebackers. A couple of them are blitzing. Man coverage in the secondary. Marciano starts to go across. The ball is thrown back. He sees it, comes back for the ball, and that is a big individual effort for Marciano and the Hawkeyes. And they'll go for two. Rodgers, pitch back, Stewart, nothing there. Down back at the five. Brian Townsend and Tripp Wellborn. But they do get the touchdown at 32 seconds to play in the third quarter. What it is, it's two young men from Massachusetts scoring a touchdown for Iowa against Michigan. Rodgers to Marciano. He releases to the inside. Key's got him inside. Murray has him to the uh, to the cross the middle. He sees the ball coming. He stops. Murray's problem is he lost sight of the football. Of course, he he probably felt like he had pretty good coverage. Well, David Key picked him up. Key's the corner on the boundary side of the field, number 26. Key had him going into the end zone and then lost him too. Well, he knew he had help to the inside. Yeah. So with Murray, with that man right there, uh, Hayden Fry is very happy. But uh, Matt Rogers pretty excited about that touchdown. Hayden is saying, see, I told you we could do it. Well, the thing, go sick them. They, One just, more they just need to have confidence. They know that there's another fourth quarter to play. They were down by quite a few points, but you know, they can still win this ball game. points, however, is an awkward number, isn't it? That'll be two touchdowns to take the lead. That's picked up by Howard. Desmond Howard's on his way. And comes back to the 35-yard line. First down for Michigan, Roger Twybo. Thank you very much, Keith. The ball in the wrong hand. <laughs> 35-yard line, first down. This is Tony Bowles, 
slipping away from two tacklers and finally three of them get him as he wiggles his way up near the 42. He almost got that ball knocked out of his hands. He did. That ought to do it for the third quarter. So with one period left to play, Michigan 23, Iowa 12. Well, there's that hot air balloon getting a little higher and higher. Better look out for the airplane pulling the car dealer banners. They'll be coming soon. <laughs> yeah, there's three, four of them up there. All right, second down for the Michigan Wolverines now, and four, Michigan leading 23 to 12 as we have a mistake. Matt Elliott missed the snap count and took off, and that will cost him five. So that procedure call with no time having expired will back him up. Offense. Go to your left of your screen. That's Matt Elliott, number 69. And they come in with a different play as McMurtry returns and Derek Alexander leaves for Michigan. The ball is resting at the 36. And it is second down and eight. Taylor pass good to Callaway. Chris shakes one and goes out of bounds at about the 37 38 yard line. Eddie Polly on the defense. And that's a Michigan first down. Big play. Here's a man here. The outside receiver is going to go straight down. He's just going to break to the outside. The man will be in the flat. And Taylor gets out here with all kinds of time to look downfield. A mobile quarterback. Allows you to have your receivers go a little bit deeper on their routes without having to ask your offensive lineman to block any longer. Call it the Iowa 37. And Leroy Horde cuts in behind the right guard Elliott and the center Everett. And he moves it down to about the 31. Here's Jack Arute again. Well, Keith Paul Marciano saw his son Peter score that touchdown for Iowa, but it seems like too little too late. I mean, are they going to be able to get back in this one? You did count them out. Massachusetts <laughs> connection is going to do it. As we said, the Bay Staters are really performing well. Why did your son come here? Well, he came here because it's a great school. He came down here. He loved the people. He loved the school. And we're going to do it yet. Don't count us out. Well, we're not going to count them out. Typical Marciano. <laughs> Slap you upside the head. Never quit. <laughs> don't, don't know the word quit. Nope. This is Bowles. And Bowles butting heads will have the first down for Michigan just inside the 25. Here's a look at the third quarter stats. And what you see Michigan doing now is taking over control on the ground. 168 yards through three quarters. Tony Bowles now up near 90 yards rushing on the day. The other thing that you note in there are the turnovers, each team having three. We've had quite a few turnovers today, but Michigan getting their running game going. That's what they need now. Take some time off the clock and uh, get some yardage running the ball. Ford checks out. Leggett in for Michigan. And Bowles carries. And as long as you let Michigan run the ball like this, they'll just keep doing it. They'll do it for a month. Brad Quast made the tackle on Bowles. Because when you're running the ball this way, you are controlling the ball. You have possession. You cannot hurt me because it is in my hand. <laughs> and that's the way Boshin Becker feels about things. Well, their offense has really been a little bit uh, uh, anemic this year. They've had some injuries, as we mentioned. They're the quarterback position, a bunch, the fullback. Was hurt. Ford is back in now after shaking off a ding in the leg. And Leroy has it, and the penalty flag goes down. They wipe out a big play by Ford. Going to bring it back. Somebody started too soon. You know what's happening? 
the Iowa defense getting tired. Well, they're getting tired, and uh, you're, you're right. And you saw a horde there break a couple of tackles, and that horde is tough to tackle and tough to bring down. But uh, when, when your defense gets tired, it also happens. We're talking about the inefficiency of the Michigan offense this year with the injuries at quarterback and a bunch to fullback. Also in that offensive line, they've got a couple of uh, young offensive linemen. Everett playing at center for the first time. Elliott, the right guard, a sophomore playing for the first time. And Skrepanek, the right tackle, also a young man and a sophomore. So it takes a little bit while to, to uh, you know, you don't go anywhere if your offensive line doesn't lead you. And they're not going to get Ramirez back at all, I don't think. Mark Ramirez. Second down and 12 for Michigan. Gonna run that reverse with Desmond Howard and look at Taylor throw the block. But it doesn't work for much. Jim Johnson was the man pursuing and uh, Johnson at 270 and Michael Taylor the quarterback picked him off. Well he did a smart thing too. He waited until he got turned just enough so it wouldn't be a clipping. <laughs> And then he had just kind of right. nudged him. Yeah, it wasn't a full collision. <laughs> yeah. uh, he knew what he was doing. He knew how much he was biting off. So it'll be third down and about 20 as the ball comes back to the 34-yard line. Hawkeye defense, even though they appear to be getting a little tired, are backing them up here. Taylor sets up and goes big with it. That's got to get a flag. Got to be a flag. Anthony Wright got tangled up with Chris Calloway, and it's going to be a first down for the Michigan Wolverines. Well, he tripped. I don't know whether uh, Wright there tripped him intentionally or pushed him or grabbed him. There's a good look at it. He's going to beat him straight down the field. The jam's all right. See, there's the oh, push. he grabbed a hold of his shirt. Yeah, he grabbed him on his shirt. Now Wright holds his hand down by his side, says, hey, not me, not me. That's a good call and good work by our cam camera crew. You hate to do that, Iowa, if you're on, I an Iowa fan because it was uh, third down and long. Yeah, third down and 20. Yeah. Puts Michigan in business at the Iowa 19-yard line. And this is Leggett. Not a lot. That's Cross, 35, loading up on Leggett. Oh, ooh, look at that, Earl Bruce. That's a big win for Colorado State. Whack against uh, Hawaii. Big win. Second down, seven, from the 16. Will damage Hawaii's hopes. The Rainbow Warriors really had their mind set on the Aloha Bowl, playing in a bowl game at home, but that might hurt them. Second down and seven for Michigan at the Iowa 16. This is Horde. And taken down by John Derby. Eddie Polly there too. And that'll give him a first down and goal near the six yard line. First and goal, Michigan. Leading 23 12 and trying to bang it in again. And it's been pretty much Michigan here in the second half, except for that one possession that Iowa got a touchdown on it. Ford. Oh, good play. Very, very good play by Brett Bielema, the freshman from Prophetstown, Illinois. Well, if Iowa wants to stay in this game, their defense has to come up with some big plays right here and keep uh, Michigan uh, out of the end zone. Hayden Fry, 6-4-3 last year. That's the first time in eight years that he didn't win eight games or more. Well, a couple of Bulls scouts here today, I understand. Citrus Bowl supposedly had some better here and sort of the Freedom Bowl. 
Taylor, a little quarterback draw. Dancing up the middle, gets back to the five. And it'll bring up third down and one more tackle for Brad Quast. Boy, he's adding them up now, isn't he? Well, he's an outstanding player. Uh, not only is he the good tackler and uh, like we have a four-year starter, but he also came into the ball game with eight career interceptions. And that kind of tells you something about him, too. Not only can he tackle, but he also is intelligent enough to read patterns, pass patterns, normally the tight end that comes into his area in the middle of the field. Third down and goal. Taylor gets it off, throws it away. You know what? Field goal here is just about as good as the touchdown. Just any kind of points, yeah. Yep. yeah. It'll make it 26 to 12, give Michigan a 14 point lead. That's still something for Iowa to shoot at. Two touchdowns in the last uh, nine, minutes. nine minutes of the game. But you got to stop Michigan. They haven't stopped them this half. Nope. J.D. Carlson. Nine out of nine in field goals this season. Ken Solomon holds it. It's a 22-yard shot. That's good. And so your score is 14-point edge, Michigan at 26 to 12. up a little bit and most college football teams are susceptible to injuries. You get the the wrong injury in the wrong place at the wrong position. It, it can it'll cost you a ball. You can't continue to go up each game. You're gonna have right. some valleys and you just hope that uh, that you play well enough when you're down to win. Yep. Fifty-eight to play in the game now as J.D. Carlson will kick it off to Hughes and Saunders. That's going to be a short high kick. And it'll be Hughes from the 11. Feeling his way across the 30 and to about the 33. I think that hot air balloonist coming in over the new hospital here at the University of Iowa looks like he's headed for the stadium. <laughs> Wants to know what's going on. I hope he misses the crane. From the 33, first down, Hawkeyes. They've got to do some scoring quickly now. They did respond after Michigan scored a while ago. Here's Matt Rogers, throws underneath. Good pass, good play. Hughes almost popping out of there with it. Gets up to the 49-yard line before Eric Anderson brings him down. So there's a, there's a degree of quickness about this Iowa football team that makes them dangerous. Well, when you spread everybody out, so you have a chance to get a quick score. The ball is resting at the 49, as you can read what has happened so far in the ballgame. A lot of mistakes in it. 26-12, Michigan leading. Rodgers again, a quick drop. Oh, oh, oh. Well, he held it long and long and, and then tried to pitch it forward like a shovel pass, and I think it's going to be an incomplete pass. Yep, they're going to let him get away with it. Michigan's arguing about it. John Milligan is there saying, Where was, who was the eligible receiver? Well, John probably has a very good point. But it was Chris Hutchinson that had a hold of it. Rodgers is just a sophomore, and as we said, a little max, it was in blocking. For the loss, it's not a loss, but an incomplete pass. And look out here, because this play may come back. That's Tony Stewart with what would have been a first down, but there is a penalty flag, and it was thrown by the umpire, and that almost always means hold. And it does one more time. So the Hawkeyes waste a good play, waste the first down. 
They're getting to a point in this game at the eight minutes and 13 seconds to play Holy down by 14 offense. points where they can't afford to waste anything. They need two scores and uh, you know you're, you're probably going to get the ball two times more. I, I doubt if you're going to get three unless you really stop uh, Michigan the way they were running the ball the last time. You're looking at two possessions at the most. But now from the 39, second down at about 20. As Rogers rolls and buys time and hits his man on the number. That's again your Massachusetts connection. First down at the 40, it's Peter Marciano. I think a quarterback who can get outside the pocket, Keith, is just so much dangerous, more dangerous than a one that stands in the pocket. Marciano just goes, hooks to the inside. He was looking to the middle of the field initially, but Rodgers gets outside the pocket, gives him a lot more time to throw. The offensive line don't have to block as well. And it's first down, Hawkeyes, Michigan 40. Straight back this time. He's got Stewart, but chooses the middle instead in the pass. Did he catch it? Oh, he took he a wall up. That's Hughes. Hughes held on. And he was really nailed by Eric Anderson, but he held the ball. There's Hughes at the top, number three. Watch for 37. Anderson coming in from the left. That was a great uh, reception. And, uh, well, you, you hold on to a ball like that, you know, oftentimes you see the ball being uh, coughed up. Good, uh, good catch by uh, Hughes. Another first down at the Michigan 27. Rodgers. No good. Travis Watkins and uh, the key here was as David Key had fallen down. Yeah. If, uh, if, if Rodgers had seen that and if Watkins had seen that it might have been six. Peter Marciano, who made that big catch a moment ago, coming into today's ball game, had six catches on the season. Today he has caught six for 93 yards. Second down and ten, and the Wolverine 26 yard line. That's an incomplete forward pass. Unless the lineman caught it. T.J. Osmond coming right up the middle, belted Rodgers, and I think, I think Mike Devlin, the center, may have caught the ball. He did. An offensive lineman did touch it. That's what brought the flag. Yep. That's what happened. It's tough for those offensive linemen when they see the ball coming to get away from it, but that's exactly what you have to do. Take a look at the pass protection here as Rogers initially is in good shape. Then everybody leaves as Osmond 94 comes free. It's illegal touching, loss of down. And it's illegal offense. touching by an offensive lineman. Hit the center, number yeah. 60, Mike Devlin. He caught it. And of course that carries also loss of down. Well, that was more of a fumble too than a pass because the ball was just shaking loose. And it was, but illegal touching means they call it a pass, rule the pass, and not a fumble. So it is third down, and the ball comes back out to the 32-yard line. Rodgers, tight end, 84, Titley incomplete. He was between two defenders and couldn't reel it in. Pretty good defenders. Well, it was, uh, it was covered well. There's a penalty flag back up around the 35, yeah. 36 65. against Iowa. It would have been brought back anyway, but it was a throw was right there. It would have been a tough catch if he would have made it. Sixty-five, holding <laughs> offense. I'll tell you one thing, the officials are going to have to go home and wash their flags because <laughs> they've used them today. Number 65, Scott Davis, who was caught on that play. He was, a, uh, he was an outstanding uh, discus and shot put thrower. In fact, he was the number two uh, shot putter in the nation a couple of years ago coming out of high school. 
Actually, <laughs> Iowa went almost three quarters without a flag, yeah. and now they're Getting piling some, up on them. Some critical uh, yep. penalties here. Third down and 25. Now the ball coming back to the 41 yard line. No checks. For just a moment, it looked all right. Well, they'll find it away. No checks away from Wilburn. And goes out of bounds at the 16 yard line. The nickname Hawkeye comes from the 1926 novel The Last of the Mohicans written by one of America's first great authors, James Fenimore Cooper. Michigan sitting on a 14-point lead, just under one second under six minutes to play in the ballgame. Well, on the football just outside their own 15-yard line now. Michael Taylor started today, first time we've seen him since the opening game against Notre Dame. And he's played well, has played well. really signed, uh, so showed no signs of uh, the uh, soreness in his back or his arm that uh, kept him out. Leroy Horde uh, will have a yard or so. Actually, it probably helped his shoulder and arm because coming out of the fall camp, he, he did have a sore shoulder. Yeah, he did. And, uh, a little rest for him. Just a look at some of the assistants that have been with Bo Schembechler over the years that have gone on to lead other programs. Some uh, pretty good names there. Yeah, for a time it was Bears boys. Bear had more. Woody had more. Then Frank Broyles had a whole month. And now Bo. Dominant. Well, if he beats Kelly, he doesn't. Sure does. Second down and nine. Foles trying to cut back. Tony had an ego down. Yeah, that's right. Good call. He had an ego down at the 16, and that's where they'll put the ball. And here's Jack. Keith, what you're looking at is the latest in chapeaus in Iowa City. It's one that's commemorative of the Big Ten, the Roses, and of course, go Hawkeyes. And I want to let you guys know upstairs, I've got two waiting after the game for you guys, too. Gee, thanks, Jack. Uh, you can give mine to somebody down there if you want, Jack. I'm not interested. How about charity? I'm not sure that I didn't bring my, my quick in. The bugs have given it. <laughs> Four and a half minutes to go in the game. And on third down and nine, Michael Taylor throws underneath, short of the first down, complete to Derek Walker. Walker brought down about three yards short of the first down. Trojans almost uh, right there with Notre Dame in the fourth quarter. No score. 17-14? Yeah. Michigan will punt for the first time today. A lot of kickers were different shoes. See it mostly on uh, place kickers, not on punters. He likes the way that white one feels on his kicking leg. Where's the other one for uh, footing? Chris Stapleton. Well, that's not a very good kick. But it's, it's going to look pretty good in the stats. Uh, Marciano picks it off at the 34 and comes back to the 45. The 44-yard punt, but it was an endo ender on, on the rug, however. It might have gone much further. But uh, this is grass now at Iowa, and uh, the Hawkeyes get the ball back in very good field position. Right now, the Michigan Wolverines. Sitting on top of the Big Ten along with Illinois. Matt Rogers to, Marcy, uh, to Richard Bass. And Bass, number 23, works his way up across the midfield stripe. It's promo time, huh? They've scheduled game three for Tuesday. And unless something untoward happens, 
between now and then it appears they will resume the World Series at 8 p.m. Eastern Time to be seen here on ABC Sports. You know, I just got to throw a, a, a bouquet Faye Vincent's way. I think he's handled that whole situation yes. uh, in very good taste. Uh, sure, it's sure. a tough situation. Second down and Matt Rogers gets his pass off underneath the coverage and it should be depending on the mark of first down for Iowa. It will be as the ball is marked near the 43 yard line. You know your hackles always get up when you read somebody who writes on a assumption that uh, there was pressure from ABC Sports to resume the World Series and it's just a flat outright lie. There was no pressure. Never ever from anybody. 35 yard line. The ball is uh, moved by Tony Stewart who's getting some playing time now. I guess the only way that Tony Stewart uh, gets that leg and body back in shape is to play some and that's what Hayden Price doing. Giving him some time. Matt Rogers goes to Stewart and Tony will have another first down for the Hawkeyes as he moves it inside the 30. But the, uh, the uh, feeling about uh, resuming the World Series and playing it certainly playing it if you're going to play it anywhere you play it there because it is the property of the Bay Area. Oh, yes. Yeah. No, no, I there. thought uh, all the decisions that he made were right on. Yep. You've got to play it there. The fans uh, deserve to have it there. Stewart again. And he's inside the 25 as we approach the two minute mark in the ball game. What it would appear now, Bob, that the next really challenging moment. So I, I'm certainly not going to say Indiana is not going to be a challenge for Michigan, even though the game's in Ann Arbor. The Wolverines now have played two tough ball games. They went up to East Lansing, won a tough ball game. And the pass is caught by Stewart again. Then they've come down to Iowa City to play a tough ball game, even though they lead by 14 points. It's still been a tough ball yes, game. It has. And now they're going to go home. And you certainly aren't going to lean back in your rocking chair at home and say, oh, Hummer, the Bill Mallory fight. After they lost to Notre Dame in the first game of the year, we said that they could still come back and not only win the Big Ten title, as you see Hughes touching that out pattern, but also have a chance to com compete for the national title. And as as, as undefeated teams get knocked off uh, week after week, uh, Michigan moves up and the uh, if they stay and take care of business, uh, they will have a chance at the end of the year to compete uh, for number one. A national championship Jeb Becker never has enjoyed over the uh, 20 years he's coached at, uh, at Michigan, never has had a, a national champion. Of course, some of that's going to hang on what happens in South Bend between Southern California and Notre Dame. Southern California wins that. That really sets up what could be a championship game if, if those two do meet without further losses in the Rose Bowl. Tony Stewart carried there and the Wolverines uh, shut the door on him. Nothing doing and down he goes. At the conclusion of the game we'll announce the Chevrolet most valuable players from each team. The 19th year that Chevrolet has participated in the scholarship program. That's an incomplete forward pass. Once again it's Mike Evans. And apparently Evans had the sole responsibility today of making life miserable for Matt Rogers and he's done it. Chevrolet donating a thousand dollars to the general scholarship fund of each of the universities. Notre Dame going ahead of uh, Southern Cal in the fourth quarter. Penalty flag on that last play. You know Evans has and had it's an against outstanding. the Hawkeyes. I'm sorry. Evans has had an outstanding day. He's a backup defensive end. Illegal motion, offense. Repeat the down. Backup defensive end. For Michigan and has had two sacks and uh, several other close uh, sacks and hurries uh, in the ballgame. You got a minute and eight seconds, and I think the outcome of the game is academic. But it's still a learning time, and particularly for this Iowa team that is still coming together. And particularly for the young man number seven. A pass thrown for Hughes is good. Hughes makes the catch and he is taken down by number 22, Lance Dutton.
going without a huddle. Third and seven, the ball on the eighth. Ball slapped away by Veda Murray. He tried to touch it to the back of the end zone, looking at Hughes. And there were just too many people, and Murray went up and slapped it away. There's about six people here. Take a look at it from the ground level. Pass protection is pretty good. Rogers is going to let everybody get to the middle of the field. Takes a little off of it. Now, some people would call that a duck. See, now quarterbacks would say, I just try to take a little off so it wouldn't get there so fast. <laughs> I let my men get there, give them a chance to get there. Clock will go now on the snap of the ball. Todd Barry doing our spotting again today. Rogers hums it down the middle of the field, and there were three white shirts there, and there's no way in the world he's going to get that ball to Saunders. And Trip Welburn was the man that knocked it away. And so the Hawkeyes on fourth down, failing to hook up, will turn the ball over to the Michigan Wolverines, and that will do it. Iowa with two timeouts remaining, but with only 31 seconds remaining, it seems certainly academic. So we look forward to next week when we'll see you from Ann Arbor, Michigan with the Indiana Hoosiers against these same Michigan Wolverines. Top thoroughbreds from around the world bring from the post in a turf race classic. It's the 38th running of the Budweiser International live tomorrow on ABC Sports. So Michael Taylor comes out for the snap for Michigan, and he'll sit down on the four-yard line, and that starts your clock rolling. And now it's just a matter of reeling off the final half minute. I thought Bo had a good line last year when they played to a 17-17 tie. He came to the center of the field, shook hands with Hayden Fry, and said very wryly, what a waste of time. Yeah, but he didn't cover up the pink walls of the clubhouse. <laughs> they remained as is. The game is over. The Michigan Wolverines have won it by a score of 26 to 12. The Chevrolet most valuable players in the ball game today are Michael Taylor for Michigan, 11 out of 15, 179 yards and two touchdowns. He ran eight times for 30 yards and the touchdown. Coming back to the action. The quarterback for Iowa, Matt Rogers, 29 of 41 for 287 yards, two touchdowns. He also had an interception. And so they march along toward the rest of the season. As we said, we'll see you next week. Indiana, Michigan from uh, Ann Arbor with the uh, second games of either Washington, UCLA, or Ohio State and Minnesota to follow. Third straight conference win over Iowa at Kinnick Stadium. A look at Michigan's marketing effort, including a New York Times best-selling author. And a scouting report on Michigan's homecoming opponent, the Hoosiers of Indiana. All that and more coming up next. Michigan Replay with Bo Schembechler and Jim Brandstatter is brought to you by General Motors, the mark of excellence. By Buick and your Buick dealers. The great American road belongs to Buick. By Payne Weber, serving the financial needs of individual, corporate, and institutional clients. By Unison, the computer company that works with you to produce solutions for you. And by Bud Light, everything else is just a life. Everybody and welcome to Michigan Replay. Well, for the first time since 1982, the Michigan Wolverines come out of Kinnick Stadium in Iowa with a victory. This year, 26-12 over Iowa, and that's got to make you feel good getting out of there with a win. Well, it's, uh, it's been a hard place for us to play, and um, we met a fired-up uh, Iowa team, as you could expect. That game's always been tough for us. The main reason, Jim, is that they're, well, of course, they're a good team. But uh, it comes right after the Michigan State game. And the Michigan State game, you know, is an emotional game for us. And then to go out to play two on the road, uh, it's been tough. And Iowa always seems to play their best game against Michigan. It always seems offensively 
their people do things they haven't done all season. I told the team before the game that the one thing that you have to expect when you play at Michigan is that particularly when you go on the road, the team that you're playing in the Big Ten Conference will play the finest game they played all year. Well, I always started out that way because on offense, when they got the ball, you deferred the opening kick. Right. They went to work on you on the ground a little surprising, land with a little deep passes over right. the middle. Well, first of all, they ran the, the big guy. 255 and, and, he, and, and he is big, Jim. <laughs> and then uh, they started to throw to him coming out of the backfield as they did here. Uh, for you viewers out there, you can see the size of this guy. He's 255 pounds. He's got good hands, and he's a load. Last guy I saw this big right running back was that Woodard kid from Texas a and That's right. That, uh, he's about that size, although this kid is taller. Um, Rogers, a fine quarterback here, was under pressure and fumbled. Brian Townsend picks it up for us and enthusiastically running down the field when he knows he can't run with a fumble. <laughs> and then you get the ball, and Michael Taylor gets the start for you. Well, we felt uh, if we didn't start playing him now, we'd never get to use him all season. Uh, he had two good weeks of practice, and that's about all he's had all week, all year, really. And uh, I thought he did an excellent job. Uh, he threw well. He, um, he ran the team well. He got us into the right place. Here's a third down and sixth play and he takes off scrambling. Now, the one thing about him is that uh, if you leave a hole in there on uh, what we call jump coverage, man-to-man -man underneath, and everybody's running out of there, uh, he can hurt you scrambling with the ball. Unfortunately, here's a fumble. Well, we went down in there to, to score, and we lost the ball, and Iowa takes over. Uh, there was an exchange of turnovers in the game. Here's one for us, uh, where Beta Murray goes up and takes the ball away from Iowa. I think Hayden thought that was passing. Yeah, I didn't know it at the time until I saw it here uh, on the uh, picture. Uh, Mike comes right back and starts throwing over the middle to Chris Calloway. And um, we start a drive of our own. We're at the 30-yard uh, line here, about at the 30. And your young screen pass gets in there. Yes, this is Bernie Leggett. He's a uh, regular freshman playing fullback when Gerard Bunch got hurt. And I think he's going to be a very fine player. Mike comes back, throws over the middle and really pinpointed that ball. McMurtry made a great catch because he was under duress and he got hit hard as he caught the ball. And uh, we missed the extra point there, Jim, and it was six to nothing. Come back and we get a fumble here. Uh, the big guy, Bell, was running for yardage and we hit him from behind and uh, stripped him of the ball. And Bobby the ball Abrams back. caused that and then you go back to work on the ground. Right. Here's Tony Bowles uh, for about a five or six yard game. Third and two situation. And this you haven't seen in the first few games the option play uh, with Michael Taylor picking up the first down. Well with Michael he gives you almost more offense to run doesn't he? Well I don't think more offense but there are a few plays that we do uh, a little more often than we would uh, otherwise. Here's a field goal by J.D. Carlson that puts us up nine to nothing. And he hadn't missed all year there's a pleasant surprise from what you thought was going to be a concern early in yeah, the year. He's been very very good. Here we're under pressure we had the man sacked and he got the ball away. I thought Rodgers uh, did a great job. You know, Jim, uh, he's the son of the uh, Boston Celtics coach. And being a Piston fan, uh, <laughs> I resent that. <laughs> so you got after him pretty hard. <laughs> well, tried to. No, he, he's going to be a great quarterback. He's really doing, doing a great so job. So you talk about sons of coaches, and uh, this kid shows good poise. He like does. He does. He's going to be very good. And everybody's worried about them hitting a lot of passes on us here. He's, hit Watkins for a touchdown to close the gap to nine to six. We block the extra point, go in at halftime, leading by three. But back to this young Rogers kid. I think he's gonna be a fine quarterback and, uh, and I'm sure his dad's very proud of him. Uh, but he threw for a lot of yardage against us and uh, he's gonna be a force to reckon with in the conference. And at halftime you had to say, man, when are we gonna be able to take control? Because it looked like he started to take control then let it get away. Right, well, we let it get away when they went right down there and scored. And uh, three-point uh, halftime advantage is not much when you're playing on the road. <laughs> Coming up, a look at the second half highlights. But first, a surprise for Michael Taylor when he found out he was going to start.
Mo came and told me uh, this morning, he said, he said, you're going to start. He said, just go out there and do your best, and, and then everything will be fine. I just went out there and tried to play hard. We went out there and we felt that no matter what the situation was, that we could get the first down. And I think that showed the character of our offensive line. Our running backs ran hard, receivers were downfield blocking. Hey, when you got a whole team just playing that way, I think you can't be beat. Record book brought to you by the Aeroquip Corporation, supplying industry with plastics and fluid conveying components. Who holds the record for the longest run from scrimmage? In 1979, Butch Woolfolk went 92 yards for a TD versus Wisconsin. Well, let me know I can play here at Michigan. Uh, to play up to the Michigan defense is a, is a heck of a job, you know. And then you can play with the Michigan defense. You can play with one of the best defenses in the country. And that's what I came here to play. So with the best defense in the country, Michigan. A very happy Brian Townsend who filled in for Alex Marshall, who was injured in that first half of the Iowa game. And that's what you've got to have, depth. And Brian Townsend came in and did a good job at that point. Well, you do have to have depth because we lost Alex. Alex was our big pressure guy uh, rushing the passer. And uh, we lost him. He went back in, he got re-injured, and after that, we kept him out. He got a precarious 9-6 lead at the end of the first half, and then you kind of fiddle around with each possession. Your second possession, though, the second half, it looked like you said, let's take control, yeah, I, let's take this I game. Thought, I thought we could move on him, and uh, we, we were doing a pretty good job of it the first half, but stopping ourselves. Here's a draw play to Tony Bowles after we had had a penalty, and this was like a uh, first and 20. We had to get out from under that uh, penalty. Yeah, any question about Michael's ability to throw had to be answered right there. Right. It was, uh, that was a 20-yard out cut, and uh, he did an excellent job getting the ball to McMurtry. Here, uh, he jammed us up in here, and Leroy broke outside and uh, picked up good yardage as we're driving down in now to score. And he held on to the ball. And he held on to the ball, <laughs> which, of course, is a great, great uh, plus. Tony Bowles, I thought, running hard here. There weren't a lot of big creases in that defense, but enough to get us moving. Big play here and a big gamble on fourth down. Fourth and one, we went to the uh, bootleg, and uh, Michael took it in uh, standing up. Now, that really put the pressure on Iowa a lot, I thought. Well, it, you know, it gave us a uh, back to a 10-point lead, and that was good. Here's <laughs> We pressured the passer, and he threw the ball, and um, the receiver was down on one knee, and the ball was dead when he caught it for a three-yard loss. Um, this is Tony, or uh, no, this is Leroy breaking up the middle uh, for a good game. I thought both of those backs ran hard. Um, not great yardage, but important yardage. Yeah, this is just a great run on the screen. This is a screen pass. He got some blocking out there, and Tony knows what to do in the open field. He knows how to dodge. He's, he's got good vision. You can see the defenders, and uh, he did a great job taking him in the end zone to give us a 23 to 6 lead. And at that point, you had to be a little more comfortable. Yes, except Iowa came right back, and the <laughs> Rogers kid was throwing well. Threw this one down the middle right over our two linebackers uh, for a first down. Um, he hits this pass over on the uh, sideline. A great catch. I think that's uh, Rocky Marciano. No, it's that's Peter. Not his name. <laughs> Peter. I, know, I know it's Peter Marciano. Rocky Marciano's nephew. But uh, it's Marciano's nephew, and he's one tough little football player. Here they hit Watkins again. Here's a third down, 10. And on third and 10, we had pressure on him. Stepped outside the pressure and threw the ball down there, right in behind Beta Murray for a touchdown. And uh, <laughs> that was to Marciano. And as comfortable as you were before when you scored, now you're probably uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. Now it's not very good. Uh, Mike comes right out on a bootleg. Hits Chris Calloway, who breaks away for a good game. And uh, we're on the move here again. And third down and 20. This is a big play out here, going deep, and um, uh, Chris Calloway got pushed in the back. Had no chance to run under the ball. That's a uh, first down uh, penalty for us. We come back with the draw play. Leroy Hoard getting good yardage. Uh, finally gets Stangy and uh, go to the field goal, and uh, J.D. Carlson kicks it. And that's your final score, 26 to 12. And the importance of that drive was that it was a time consumer after Iowa had scored. And even though you only got three out of the drive, it really put the game away for you. Well, I feel this way. Um, when you look at the Big Ten this year, you've got a half a dozen teams that are about as good as the others. If you really go down, including our ball club, there's six clubs in the league that if things are right, the other team's going to win. And uh, when you have a chance to move the ball and score, 
even though it ends up three points. That three is very, very important. And you've got to feel that your team has progressed pretty well. You've always said you never stay the same. You either get better or you get worse. And this team, I think, has gotten better, maybe not as fast as you'd like, but each week they seem to progress. Well, they're playing a little bit better. I think we played a little better offensive football as we go along here. We're not running up a lot of points or a lot of stats, but uh, we're doing a pretty decent job. Um, we, we have to overcome the loss of J.J. Grant on defense, and that, that's a tough one. Uh, but taking everything into consideration, we're in good shape. Maybe the added plus is, though, that you've got Michael back, and Michael looks like uh, a little rusty yet, but when he gets going on, yeah. and plus you had an opportunity while he was gone to get Elvis ready. That's right. Stop to consider for, for a minute that this kid really had two weeks preparation for this game. And that's about it, because he missed most of the preseason. He missed the last five weeks. And now he's back, and, uh, and I thought he did a good job. A victory over Iowa. When we come back, we'll take a look at Michigan's marketing machine. But first, we'll talk to one of the offensive heroes of the Iowa game, talking about the growing confidence in the offense. You know, we moved the ball better than we have all year long, and, uh, you know, I think it was just a matter of time of uh, things coming together because we had a lot of uh, young offensive linemen and uh, a lot of other young people on the offense, and, uh, you know, things started to uh, come together right now, and, uh, you know, we're pretty effective when things come together. It's nice to have Mike back. He's a fifth-year senior. He knows a lot about the game, and uh, he kind of uh, controls the offense and uh, makes things, make sure everything's uh, under control when we're out there in game situation. Hey, uh, Mike made a great read and a uh, you know, perfectly thrown ball. The University of Michigan football program is one of the nation's best and most recognizable, and it's getting even bigger. Through individuals and department marketing strategies, Wolverine football is being showcased on videotape and in books. Already there are two home videos available. The Ten Year War, a look back at the Michigan-Ohio State rivalry during the time when Woody Hayes and Bo coached against each other. And there's also the best of Michigan replay, the 1988 season, a dramatic look back at last year's Big Ten Championship and Rose Bowl season. The latest addition to this marketing effort is the book Bo, written by Coach Schembechler and Detroit Free Press columnist Mitch Album. It is a very lively and entertaining look back at the career of one of the most successful coaches in the history of the collegiate game. For Album, it was a chance to work with a man who doesn't get too close to the media and a coach who surprised him with his candor and insight. I admired the way that Bo has always been ethical in his career, hasn't been caught on cheating, has, has stuck by the rules, even when that's cost him in terms of national championships and recruiting and things like that. And uh, as it turned out, I think that was the most valuable part of the book. The last five chapters are specifically on that. It's called Straight Talk, that section, and he deals with recruiting, he deals with uh, agents, he deals with steroids. I don't think a coach, in fact, I know no coach has ever dealt with these subjects in a book, uh, certainly no active coach, and very few coaches are willing to come out and say what Bo has said in this book. Then uh, I was also surprised to find out that he admits that a lot of what he does is an act. You know, uh, people who do things for an act usually don't admit that it's for an act, but he was very candid in this book. He says, my temper, the way I scream at players, the way I bark at the media, a lot of that is just part of an act. All of it really is part of an act to get what I want uh, motivation-wise. And, you know, he says even when he sees a player walking across campus, he might yell out, you know, hey, are you on your way to math class or something like that? He knows in the back of his mind he's trying to send the message to the player that he's been following his academics and don't think he can fool around on him or something like that. And for a coach to come out and admit it while he's still doing it, because I think some of these recruits may get a hold of this book and say, oh, I got this Schembechler guy figured out, you know, I don't have to worry about him. Bo, the book and the man, obviously captured Album's imagination, and it seemingly paints a picture that goes beyond football. It's a story for everyone, and for some, it even can restore your faith in the system. It restored my faith that there are some people in sports who still can be big and successful and, uh, and play by the rules, too. I wasn't sure, Jim, before I got on this, if there was anybody left in sports who still followed the rules when you really got to know them. You know, I mean, they can fake it, but when you're really getting close, you find out maybe they're cheating like everybody else. He doesn't. And um, I think it's going to be sad when he finally gets out of football because I think we're going to lose something special. So Bo Schembechler, the man and now the book, is on the New York Times bestseller list. You know, you're going to be tough to live with. Well, uh, Mitch did a great job in there. He's a feisty little devil. He is, isn't he? Oh, you got to watch this guy, but he can write. He's really a good writer. 
And you enjoyed doing the book, and, and the other thing is, it's all an act. No, it's not all an act, Jim. Uh, okay. You played for me, didn't you? That's right. And you said when I kicked you in the rear end that time, that wasn't an act. Right, but you said that you said in the book, and I take offense to this, that I was the worst tackle in the history of intercollegiate football. Did I say that in yes, the book? Yes, you did. See, that Mitch put some things in there that I didn't say. <laughs> you are a beauty. In there. Anyway, if you're interested in the book, believe me, it is a beautiful book, and it's well written, and it's well worth reading. It's available at all bookstores. Also, coming up this weekend, Homecoming at the University of Michigan. And if you're interested in a great homecoming event in Ann Arbor at the Track and Tennis Building, be sure and show up for the Go Blue Brunch. It starts at 9 a.m. Saturday, October 28, 1989, in Ann Arbor at the Track and Tennis Building. For information, call 764-0384 for tickets. President Duderstadt will be there along with Bob Foreman, the alumni director, and great band director William E. Ravelli and the band will entertain. And it's a great homecoming event. For everybody interested in that homecoming game. And speaking about homecoming, the biggest thing about that weekend are the Hoosiers of Indiana. We'll be back with their scouting report when Michigan Replay continues. sixth edition of Indiana football under head coach Bill Mowry has a great many unfamiliar faces to the rest of the league since 24 seniors, including 15 starters, graduated last spring. But despite the losses, Mowry still has his two best offensive players back for their final season to lead IU. First and foremost is consensus All-American running back and Heisman Trophy candidate Anthony Thompson. Thompson leads the country in rushing and scoring and is third in all-purpose yards. Last week, he became the Big Ten's all-time scoring leader, surpassing Ohio State's Pete Johnson. Quarterback Dave Schnell is back for his final campaign, and the veteran signal caller has already moved into second place in the IU record book for passing yards and total offense. Schnell's receivers are young but talented, with sophomore Eddie Thomas and freshman Scott McGowan both making an impact. The defense's lone returning starter is defensive back Mike Dumas, who was a solid shot at all Big Ten honors. The junior from Alto, Michigan, is a hitter with quickness, attested by his five block punts over the past two years. Sophomore linebacker Mark Hagan has returned after sitting out a year with back problems and has quickly emerged as a leader and the leading tackler. Despite the youth of this team, Bill Mallory refuses to classify this as a rebuilding year. This is Don Fisher with the IU Radio Network reporting for Michigan Replay. Michigan versus Indiana for homecoming. It's always a big game because Coach Bo Beckler and Bill Mallory at Indiana are pals, and you always like to play tough against your good friends, and Bill Mallory knows a friend of yours. Well, he's a friend, but he's also built a great program at Indiana. He has the greatest back in the country uh, right now, and uh, a veteran quarterback who's uh, very, very talented. The one thing you've often said about teams that you worry about more is defense. Now, his defense is a little green, a little young yet, but their offense kind of makes up for that with Thompson, who's a, who can keep you, uh, Indiana in a game all by himself. He can do that. And the thing that we have to do is to deny the rush. Now, no matter what happens, we've got to do a job containing this running back. We've been successful in doing it in the past, but I'm not so sure that we can shut him down like we did in the past. He's a great, great back. What about their defense? When you're playing a young defense like Indiana has, is there any way you attack them differently than you would, say, a veteran club? Well, not really. Uh, I think they're a very solidly coached defensive team. I don't think they're a gimmick defensive team. And um, I really uh, have not had an opportunity to see much of the personnel they have in there now because they're all relatively new from uh, last year. So this is going to be uh, very interesting. And it's a challenge, too, because it's coming off two emotional games, Michigan State-Iowa back-to-back. You finally return home. You can't yeah. afford a letdown. These no. guys can get you. Indiana, along with Michigan State, Illinois, Iowa, Indiana, Ohio State, can beat you any Saturday in the year. So make sure and be with us next week. Who knows? We may have one of those weekends. You'll see it all here, right on Michigan Replay next week. Michigan Replay has been brought to you by Mr. Good.